checking some things real quick. Hold on. Is audio working? Last time audio wasn't working when we started. Audio's working. All right. All right, everybody. How are we doing? How are we doing? What is Romance Dawn 3? Romance Dawn 3. Isn't that technically what we... Should be good now? Good now? Working? I think it should be working now, right? So I'm, I'm multitasking. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all I was saying was basically I'm 15 minutes late, which I don't think is that late. So I think that uh, some leniency should be um, considered here, in my opinion. Uh, just my, my opinion. All right. <clears throat> Think we're working, right? Uh, all right. Just doing some something. What the hell is this? All right. All right. Okay. And I think I'm good. All right. <clears throat> Sorry about that, everyone. Kind of chaotic uh, afternoon. But thank you all for, uh, for sticking around and waiting. Um, let me catch the supers I missed before the stream started. Also, let's get the stream likes up to 100 real quick. Uh, audio is working, right? All right, 45 minutes. It depends on how you... It de everyone has... So that's the crazy thing about time, right? Time is subjective. Everyone experiences a different flow of time. For some people, they view the initial time of 7.15 EST as the absolute time that things needed to begin. Others view time as more fluid and fluctuating. Always, it's this nebulous thing you can never quite catch. So other people view it as like 7.45 EST, the new time, as being the official time at which things start. Um, and others just view it as like, you know what, the, the scheduled screen, stream time doesn't even matter. It's like, uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, open, just don't even think about schedules or, or set set moments in the future just take it as it comes you know life's full of surprises when's the stream gonna start we don't know you know so think about it like that i suppose all right uh Razvan antonescu thank you very much hello forget if the straw hats or other characters had what <laughs> hello forge oh I, I i get it now all right if the straw hats or other characters had youtube what would they talk about hug you thank you <laughs> um what would they talk about on YouTube? That's interesting. Actually, that's pretty easy. Um, I think Luffy would probably want to be a streamer, like a live streamer and like a, a just chatting live streamer where basically he just does random stuff every day, um, just filming him on his adventures. Uh, maybe, or uh, if he has to be a YouTuber, then maybe a vlog YouTuber filming himself going on adventures. Zoro would just do a channel talking about swords, probably. Probably talking about swords. Um, Nami, I think she could do a really good, like, uh, geography-based uh, YouTube channel. Or finance. Who knows? Usopp. I think Usopp might do comedy sketches. Sanji, cooking channel, easy. He would probably get his own TV show pretty quick. Someone would get him on Gordon Ramsay or something, and then he would teach Gordon Ramsay how to cook. Um, Robin would do something, jog I think Chopper and Robin, I think anyone that's very skilled in their profession could do channels in their profession teaching others, right? So Chopper, Robin, 
Um, easy. Frankie, same thing. Um, Frankie might be, Frankie's like a DIY channel, like teaching you home improvement stuff. Brooke, yeah, teach music. Yeah, this is pretty simple. Jinbei, teach, um, you could have a fishing channel. That'd be funny. <laughs> Wait, do fishmen eat, eat fish? Do fishmen eat fish? This is important. I don't remember. Do fishmen eat fish? Someone tell me right now. I need to know. Do fishmen eat fish? Daskarai says maybe Zoro would review booze. I don't think Zoro has a tremendous palate when it comes to drinks. He, I think he mostly drinks the same thing, right? Um, I think he's mostly, unless I'm crazy, I think he drinks a lot of sake. Um, yeah, I don't know if he's a, a connoisseur in that sense. Do fishmen eat fish? Yeah, I guess I guess swords would not be. I think Zoro would have the least successful YouTube channel. I don't think he. I think his personality just doesn't lend itself to that. You can have obviously a more serious personality and it lends itself to YouTube videos, but um, I also don't think he's like very articulate with his views either. I just don't think that he would provide like there's. I don't think there's a topic that he is an expert on that that many people would find that interesting or that he would be able to communicate that well to people. I think he would be the least successful channel out of everybody's. Uh, <laughs> it's That's just not what he's bit, built for. Zoro would do fitness, lol. Okay, fitness. I could see Zoro being a fitness expert. I could definitely see that. I think that, again, I think that he wouldn't be that good at running a channel. Um, just because I think that his views on fitness are unrealistic and unattainable for the average person. Whereas everybody else, I think, is smart enough to dumb it down. I don't think Zoro is going to be dumbing it down. Like, I'm sure Sanji can break down, here's what you, how you cook for basics, here's um, Chopper could break down, here's medicine for people learning, trying to get through med school. I don't think Zoro would be able to effectively do that. He'd <laughs> just be like, yeah, lift <laughs> lift uh, 20 tons every day, bench this much, <laughs> like, um, put yourself in freezing cold rivers and stuff like that. That's the type of advice that Zoro would give, and I just don't think it's applicable to most people. <clears throat> um, but interesting question. Behnor, thank you very much. Random off-topic question, but I want to know your take. How would you compare world government in terms of writing to other fictional evil empires, especially after Egghead? Also, can non-Straw Hats be MVPs? That is a crazy question that you just asked, just because of timing. Because the video I've got coming out literally tomorrow, literally tomorrow, now you seem like a plant, because literally the video I have tomorrow is specifically about the world government. I compare it, well, I don't really do too much in terms of comparison to other evil fictional empires, except towards the beginning, um, but it is breaking down the world, because I, I don't want to go through the whole ring of, like, here's every other important fictional dystopia or whatever, um, that can be kind of, uh, this is sticking out, oh, might need a haircut again, um, what the hell, yeah, okay, so I think that, um, just watch out for tomorrow's video. I think watch out for tomorrow's video. I think it will break down your the answer to your question much more in depth than I can do here. Um, but basically, I talk about not just how it is like as an evil empire, but the type of dystopia that it is. And not necessarily why that's unique, because we've seen other types of those dystopias, obviously, in fiction. But the way that Oda went about constructing it and introducing it to us, I think that is relatively distinct even compared to a lot of other uh, fictional dystopias even similar in the same category as the world government um i think it is fairly fairly unique the way oda kind of drew the reader into it slowly over time um just how he went about establishing what the world government is what it represents uh, i think that was one of the most methodically done aspects of his world building that really 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 helps carry um the weight of why um, the world, it communicates very, very well to the reader why the world government is as successful as it is. And the key fundamental um, issue that comes with over trying to overcome the world government. But uh, the, the, the main points, I think you will have to wait till tomorrow's video to see what I'm really getting at. But uh, just keep in mind what I just said here and then watch tomorrow's video. Again, literally less than 12 hours, it'll be out. Less than 12 hours? No, a bit more than 12 hours. 15 hours comes out at noon EST the way it always does um what the mic's not working it, it says it's working for me <laughs> wait what 
God damn it. Is the is the mic working? Sinister says the idea isn't unique, but the portrayal of it is unique. Yeah, the way we're drawn into it is very unique. Is the mic working right now? It should still be working. I guess I'm just catching whole chats here. Tom, Tom, thanks for being a member for 16 months, man. A Yonko tier member. Um, by the way, the Pirate King tier podcast, I believe the, the submission form for that just posted. So if you're interested in having one of your One Piece questions, non-One Piece questions, or just general more life discussion topics, whatever you, whatever you happen to be interested in, um, and you want to hear me answer that in depth, I do an hour plus long podcast once a month for Pirate King tier members where I take all of the questions that they submit and I go through and answer them very in depth one by one, usually more in depth or usually slipping in more um, personal stuff than I would in stream format. So if that's something you're interested in or just to support the channel, please go ahead. You also get access to every uh, other weekly podcast that I put out as is, which is my weekly extended thoughts on One Piece related stuff. But anyway. Tom, Tom, thanks for being a Yonko tier member for 16 months. Moj, you're my favorite YouTuber. Thank you very much, man. And your uh, video slash streams are always great for when I'm gaming, driving, or trying to sleep. Keep up the great work. I appreciate the support, man, because I know I've seen you around for so long. Um, I'm happy that I'm able to provide some level of, I don't, I don't know, the words, whatever the words is. Um, just entertainment. I guess that's the simplest word. Um, to at least a good amount of people. Um, and that I'm a regular part of many people's days, their routines, etc. So I really, really appreciate that, and I appreciate the support in return. Um, shoot, I kind of lost track of where we're at now. Breezy2x, thanks for the two. Mihawk versus the rest of the seven OG Warlords, who wins? I, that's too difficult of a question for me to ask. I feel like I'm leaning towards Mihawk, but it's tricky because I feel like... With team battles, Oda kind of goes, like, different ways with it. You know, like, you can do something like Big Mom versus Kid and Law, which I think most of us would feel like Kid and Law just take it. No, sorry, Big Mom just takes it. Kid and Law did take it, although that was the bomb. That was the bomb, not them. But again, like, I feel like, you know, you have Kaido and Big Mom versus the five Supernova, right? Kaido and Big Mom, I feel like... Oda wrote things in a way that made it easier for... Because at that point in time, Luffy didn't have his power-ups yet. He didn't have Advanced Conqueror's Hockey. He didn't have Gear 5th, right? So at that point in time, it was... Really, the Supernova were not really close to them. But Oda just wrote it in a way that it made it a competitive fight. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just... I think it would depend on how Oda wants to write it. Because if Oda wants to write it as Mihawks coming in with the Shanks mentality of, like, I'm just going to one-shot... Um, I'm just going to start popping Shichibuka left and right. I'm just going to one-shot with some of my stronger attacks right off the bat, right? Then Mihawk could do it, I think. At the same time, we don't quite know how strong Hancock in her prime is. Or not in her prime, she's in her prime now. Hancock at full power is, or Kuma in his prime is. So there are two, two question marks there. And Doflamingo, like, just the array of abilities the Shichibuka I have could make it fairly difficult. It's because, yeah, there's just so many abilities. And it's like how, like, every Shichibuka is going all out. So Moria is going Shadows as Guard from the start. Um, which, like, the reason I'm mentioning Moria is because even Moria, who's a very low factor in this situation, if he's using Shadows as Guard from the start, like, even the least consequential Shichibuka member is a slight problem once you're being thrown in with everybody else. Because again, Shadows as Guard was the first island splitting attack. Like, it's the first island buster attack. People forget this, but um, if Luffy wasn't... If Luffy didn't have a body made out of rubber, like, if Luffy wasn't impervious to all blunt physical damage, minus hockey, um, Luffy would have just died to Moria, right? Um, <laughs> because Moria hit him with the hardest physical punch Luffy had experienced pre-time skip. It's just it doesn't matter because Moria couldn't use hockey. But anybody else, they just die right there. Um, so I'm just bringing that up because, again, um, seven characters who are all decently, have a very wide array of abilities. They're all decently strong. Um, even someone like Moria can, like, be a little bit of a problem. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I think we need to see a bit more from... We need to see more from Mihawk. And we need to see more from Hancock. And I don't think we'll ever find out, like, what Kuma was really like in his prime. Um, but, you know. Uh, I think it's one where you could argue either way. Depends how you... 
speculate and also at the end of the day it's just how would Oda write a scenario like that he could write either side winning depending on how he wants to frame things um patty g thank you for the 20 hey Morge, it was my birthday last weekend hey happy birthday man um but just i just turned 23 and moved out a few months ago and i live alone now that's around yeah you're tracking basically the the same the same time that uh i basically moved out Nobody told me happy birthday. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Happy birthday. Is this what being an adult is like? BTW, I changed my name because you keep saying it wrong. Oh, is it Pat Galley? Are you Pat Galley? Like, is that who, who I'm talking to? You don't have to change your name for that. Is that what? I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah, happy birthday. I don't think that's what being an adult was is like. Um... Nobody told me happy birthday. Did your family tell you happy birthday? Um, most of my friends back home don't know my birthday. And I don't know theirs. But, you know, people usually have to drop, like, a little bit of, like, yeah, my birthday's coming up or something like that. And that's how I'd know birthday's coming up and I'd wish. Um, I usually don't really like celebrating my birthday, so I won't tell people. The new friends that I've made here do know my birthday because they, they just learned it at some point And um just my friends here basically make sure to always wish each other happy birthday so i do get wished here but it's not uncommon to not get wished a happy birthday by a lot of people because a lot of people just don't keep track of other people's birthdays even if they're your good friends or whatever um so i hope that's not reflective of you just not having people you're close to um because you can be close to people or good friends with people and just not know their birthday that's common i think um yeah so <laughs> that's i don't know uh, I, I wouldn't say that that's the norm necessarily, but if you drop some hints that it's your birthday, you'll probably get some birthday wishes. African Lays, thanks for the 10. Hello, Mr. Morch. I was wondering if you've ever seen After that La Avatar The Last Airbender and or The Legend of Korra. What are your opinions on them? And also, are you still planning on doing an animated movies tier list? I am now. I keep forgetting. Yeah, let's do an animated movies tier list. Um, let me write that down. Forgot about that. We'll do that at some point. Um... <clears throat> what are my opinions on them? If we do an animated movies tier list, I think people would get mad at me, though. Because I just... I can really respect a lot of 3D animated movies, but I just will always view them in a tier below the best 2D animated movies. Because to me, that's real animation. Um, 3D animation, I will just never view as, like, beautiful animation. It's It seems blocky and um, artificial to me. It's just the way it's just the way I will always view it. I view animation like the beauty of the medium is in 2D. Moving painting, that sort of thing. Uh but obviously there are plenty of 3D animation movie animated movies with like phenomenal stories from Pixar, phenomenal stories, characters, etc. Um it's just my own personal bias which I fully acknowledge. I'm sure that's a, to me it's just for animated movies the visual aspect of what I view as genuinely beautiful animation to me that that matters and to me that's just uh yeah that's that's i don't think pixar movies or dreamworks or whatever are, gonna, are ever going to carry that for me um am i still planning on yeah no we covered that as for avatar and uh the legend of korra uh yeah avatar the last airbender was my favorite show my favorite nickelodeon show when i was a kid uh it was so clearly and distinctively distinctively different from every other show on Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Disney. Um, one piece I really liked as a kid, but uh, I don't think I kept up with it as a kid, as because it just didn't come up on as much. I don't think I kept up with it as much as Avatar. Avatar was my favorite thing uh, to watch as a kid. Um, and I distinctly remember they did the most fucked up thing with Avatar. Um, so who remembers this? They took between... See, I was a huge Avatar fan. Season 1 comes out, then Season 2 comes out. And then they do this thing where between the end of season two and the start of season three, right? They end season two on a huge cliffhanger and then they're going to start season three. Season three, they take like two or three years to come out with t season three for Avatar The Last Airbender. I might be exaggerating, but let me take a look. Avatar The Last Airbender episode air dates. Let's take a look. Um, this was what always really pissed me off about that show. Not pissed me off, but it was just, like, it was a huge problem for me with that show because it was just, like, when you're young, these things matter a lot. Like, 
Uh, so December first, two thousand six, is when the first is when it ended. Oh wait, really? It wasn't that long of a break. Okay, you know what? I guess I was just not used to there being like a year long break between episodes for shows like that. Because like Nickelodeon would just pump out stuff. It was less than a year long break before season two ended and season three came out. But the break felt like so long when I was young. <laughs> That's crazy. Because there was almost no break between season one and season two. Yeah, but the break felt so long that I felt like I lost interest in the show during that period of time. Then I regained interest, obviously, once it came back. But for whatever reason, like, it, it really hurt my enthusiasm for the show. I was so hooked on the show when it was uh, coming out. Uh, anyway, I love the Avatar series. Um, it's phenomenal. I feel like it probably still holds up really well. Um... Yeah, I, I don't really know what else to, like, it, it's one of my favorite shows growing up. Easily one of my favorite shows growing up. Um, if you ask me my favorite animated show that's not an anime, I would say Avatar The Last Airbender, right? Um, yeah, uh, I don't, I didn't, I watched a bit of Legend of Korra, but I think I was past the age of really caring that much or wanting to pick up a Nickelodeon show, I guess. Um, or I think I was just done with that universe, so yeah. Um, I wasn't really going to tune into Nickelodeon to, to watch. I was in, like, high school. I wasn't going to tune into Nickelodeon to watch Legend of Korra. Um, yeah. The Water God, thanks for the 10. Do you think every Straw Hat bounty will be over 1 billion by the end of the series? I don't think so. Odo will probably jump Chopper's bounty from 1k to 1 bill to complete his gag law. I do believe that for the final bounty of the series, I think it will be something where... There's certain running gags going. I think the final bounty will be one where everyone's finally happy. So I think that it's going to be one where Sanji's finally happy with his bounty poster. I think it'll be one where Chopper finally gets a real bounty. I think it'll be where, um, like, Frankie's been upset even recently with his bounty. There have been some Frankie gags with the bounty, with his bounty recently. I think we'll finally get a set of bounties where everybody's happy. And Oda's kind of saving that for the end of the story. That's what I like to believe. Uh, Behanor, thanks for, uh, the free theory giveaway. The final war is the same tournament we saw in God Valley, but on a global scale. May or may not take place next year in-universe, because the timeline is oddly specific, in my opinion. That's a really interesting idea, because, um, if you look at, uh, I like that quite a bit, because if you look at, um, what Doflamingo did, and what NL did, there, the finales of both those arcs were a giant battle royale, where NL's like, okay, now there's the... We're cleansing the, the Sky Islands, right? Restrosa, sorry, cleansing the Sky Islands. We're going to do a big survival game. And then, you know, there'll be a few winners left at the end of it. Restrosa, same thing. We're cleansing Restrosa. We're going to do a big survival battle royale t tournament, see who comes out on top. Um, I would not be surprised if it's some something like that with what the Celestial Dragons or Eam decides at the end, because Enel and um, Doflamingo are kind of foreshadowing the idea of Eam in general. Party McFly, thanks for being a Yonko tier member for 10 months. When do you think Marine Ford will be too outdated to be used for power scaling? Aren't most of the characters way stronger by now? Um, I don't really know what that... Uh, are you assuming everyone's getting stronger? I mean, I think the younger characters are getting stronger. I don't think, like, Garp, Sengoku, Mihawk, Shanks are necessarily stronger than they were at Marine Ford. I, I imagine Aokiji's probably the same level as he was at... Marine Ford, um, Kizaru, same thing. Like, I don't think some of these, I don't think Kizaru is training over the two years. I think really only the characters that are new and up and coming, I assume, got a power boost from Marine Ford. Characters are showing more of what they can do now because Marine Ford was kind of a glimpse. But, uh, you know, I think, for example, we can scale what Marco was doing at Marine Ford very neatly to, to Marco at Wano, and it feels similar from what you would expect. Uh, I feel like. Whatever Luffy's doing against Kizaru that he did um, in, yeah, like, I think whatever Luffy was doing against Kizaru is reflective of how Luffy would do against Kizaru at Marine Ford, you know? So, uh, I think Marine Ford still works as a pretty good metric for power scaling. Um, yeah, I mean, like, we've still got Admirals, still got Yonko Commanders, um, Garp's still around, Sengoku's still around. Isaac St. Charles, thanks a lot. Hi, Morch, please rank in order which between this you'd rather lose. Lose half your height, lose half your penis size, or half your age. This is so easy. I, I feel like the answer would be pretty much the same for everyone. Lose half your age. Who wouldn't want to be 
um like i'm 28 yeah it'd be great to like with the knowledge i have now go back to 14 you you, like you're (laughs) i think most people would love to be able to go back and be younger again obviously i wouldn't love to be back in middle school starting high school but um you know if you've got the wisdom of yourself as an adult you can uh reshape your life in so many ways right you can you can do so many other things Uh, i think most everyone would love if they could turn back the clock on their age to some degree so that's easy um so that's number one lose half my height or lose half my penis size i would lose half your half your penis size before losing half your height because if i lose half my height then i mean no disrespect to uh anyone that is um i guess a little person in chat but uh i like being the height that i'm at because look if you've got a small dick then most of the world doesn't really know right if you lose half your height then that's just that affects everything about life right like can i even drive i don't don't know like you're just general like perception by the entire world is fundamentally changed right um whereas if you have a small dick you you just have a small dick like that's that's just a thing like (laughs) most people will never know right the vast majority of people you meet will never know um yeah so I, i think that's a very easy question you're gonna have to try harder half your lifespan oh lose half my lifespan that's different than I would need I would need a way to know what my actual full lifespan would be. I would, I can't answer without that. Like, give me an age. Are you saying fifty? Are you saying forty? Um, because that might go last on the list. Because it's like if it's forty, like let's say I die at eighty, then twelve more years to live. I don't think I'd want twelve more years to live. Like that seems very short, you know. Um, fifty. I think you. I don't know. I don't know. That's not a lot of time. Um, There's just not enough time to do everything you would like to do with life, right? Um, Tom, Tom, thanks for the two. The arrival of the egghead is 100% gin. Expectations? Um, I still... Oh, no, I can't really guess at that because I I already saw. I know who it is. I can't guess at that. No spoilers. Unless the spoilers I saw are fake. I don't know. But I can't guess at that. Unfortunately, I saw spoilers right before stream started. Caleb Brown, thanks for the five. If you could build a dream pirate crew to find the One Piece using Marines, who would you pick? Oh, that's a cool question. Ten members, and what positions would they have? Do they need to be in their primes? If they don't need to be in their primes, I would take... uh, Or, like... Like, sorry, do they need to be current? Like, I'm taking them as they are right now. If not, then it's kind of easy. You... You know, if it's... If it's current, then I would just take a Kainu, right? You would take a Kainu. Oda even said, you could take a Kainu and it's a wrap, because Oda even said that a Kainu, if he was the protagonist of One Piece, Oda would have to end publication in a year, right? So we'd, we'd get there quick. So take a Kainu, Kisaru, um, <laughs> I guess Green Bull. I wouldn't take Fujitora because he'd be a traitor. <laughs> he'd probably say something like, I can't let the Marines get their hands on the One Piece because they'll use it to do bad things, which is true because we're the Marine, like we're the world government. But um, no, if we assume that Fujitora won't rebel, then I take Fujitora because the biggest benefit of Fujitora is we can fly around everywhere. The ship can fly everywhere, right? Um, So it's just pretty simple. I'm taking the four admirals. Uh, Kobe will be our cabin boy. Um, (laughs) Yeah, Kobe will be our cabin boy. I'll take Sengoku. Um, Again, this is assuming everybody doesn't rebel. Garp would be too much for loose cannon. Wait, am I still... Am I captain? Am I captain? Oh, what positions they would have? I'd make a Kainu captain. He would get shit done. I'd make Kizaru our marksman. I'd give Green Bull uh, the generic role of, like... I don't know, fighter, like Zoro is or something. Um, Fujitora would be our helmsman, because we don't have to navigate it. We just fly everywhere. Um, Kobe's cabin boy... Shipwright. We need a shipwright. We need a shipwright. We need a shipwright. Who's a good shipwright? Who's the best shipwright from the Marines? I don't know if the Marines have good shipwrights. Um, this is too hard. I think I filled it out pretty well. I'll take Sengoku. I'll take Garp. I'm taking mostly just the powerhouse stack of characters. I'll take Suru because she seems smart. 
Um, um, do I want Smoker? No. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'll take Smoker. I'll take Smoker. Momonga. I'm just taking strong reens, basically, at the end of the day. I think I mostly filled it out. Marcel Beans, thanks for the two. Hey, Morge Man, just using your stream to fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> have a good night. Behenor, thank you. At least you haven't experienced Steven Universe release schedule. Four episodes, six month long break, six episodes at once, break, two episodes, break. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Cartoon Network's like now, or, um, or kids' TV shows are like now. I just remember at that point in time, I thought it was insane that it took so long for um, the final season of Avatar to come out. It, uh, to me, it killed the hype train so so hard. I just thought it was crazy. I was like, why is the next, like, how are they going to just make us wait and wait and wait? Um, Breezy2x, thanks for the five. Since you said the dramatic high, high point of time skip is I want to live, what is the dramatic high point of post time skip? Uh, I don't know exactly what my phrasing was, but I think I said, for me, it's the emotional high point, or I guess, yeah, dramatic high point, emotional high point of pre-time skip. I mean, I think it's the emotional high point for all of One Piece for me. Um, or dramatic, emotional, like, dramatic, emotional, character-based high point, whatever. Um, I think Kuma's backstory takes it for post-time skip. Um, does Kuma's backstory take it for the full series, actually? I don't know. It's hard to say. Kuma's backstory is amazing in context of Kuma's backstory. I Want to Live is the entire arc. Like, it's all of Water 7 and any Lobby and, like, everything that the Strats have been working towards and their entire trip across the ocean on the sea train, fighting through all of these characters, going up against the world government, literally declaring war against the world government. There's just a lot more overall dramatic juice I'd say, like, Kuma's backstory I still find more powerful than Robin's backstory, for me personally, um, which I never thought I'd say, but I do. Um, but I still think I Want to Live is just the dramatic... Yeah, I still maintain. I think it's the dramatic high point of uh, One Piece. I think it's the emotional high point of One Piece. Um, I just think it's a moment that kind of epitomizes what One Piece can do with uh, storytelling and just very powerful impactful rush of emotions just feel good emotions right i think that's what one piece is best for because uh even like if we look at kuma's backstory right i think the one thing that one piece does really really well maybe i'll do a video on this at some point i think one thing that one piece does really really well is uh just feel good emotions on a just a really memorable in a memorable memorable sort of way that really sticks with you right because there's so many stories that can make me cry for dark reasons or sad reasons like again kuma's backstory phenomenal but there are many other stories that also are very sad for different reasons right i think one piece is the best story that i've ever read for me that also has these really really powerful feel-good moments like um like nami saying help me and luffy saying of course i will robin's i want to live just really really make you feel as though um everything is going to be fixed everything is right with the world um, just this adrenaline rush of sort of joy of seeing characters fulfilled or having this, this, uh, this moment of coming out from the darkness into the light. I think One Piece does that better than any other series for me. And I think I Want to Live is the best moment in One Piece at doing that sort of thing. So I think I still put it on that pedestal personally, but obviously other people can disagree. Ahmed Boos is the end of Marine Ford definitely competes in my opinion, Morge. Uh, it's it's different in the sense again that like Marine Ford is very tragic, right? And there are lots of stories that can do tragic stuff really, really well. Uh, for, Marine Ford is phenomenal, obviously. The the ending moments of Marine Ford, everything that happens, Ace death, Whitebeard death, they're top moments in the series for me as well, right? Uh, I just feel like I want to live as sort of a one piece special, if that makes sense. It's just I can't think of another moment like that that produces that sort of just positive feel good like aha like this this sort of positive like out of the darkness into light moment for a character in that way that's built on all of this hardship and struggle throughout the arc for the main characters and for this one character robin in particular because it connects both right um i want to live is amazing for robin for all of the reasons that we understand about her character right then coming out of her backstory but then also for the straw hats in the sense that 
they've gone through like they've gone literally like gone through hell traveled to the ends of the world for the sake of this character they just need to hear like that all of their efforts have not been in vain that she still wants to like is there still hope does she still want to be with them so it just connects everything very beautifully for me also coming off the back of like declaring war in the world i don't know um i want to live is just unique in that sense JK Kane, thanks for being a Yonko tier member for the 16 months. I've always wondered what your favorite or at least top three favorite character designs in the series is. Mine is definitely Kizaru or Yamato. Um, that's tough. Mihawk, Kaido, Katakuri. I'd say those off the top of my head. There probably are others. Doflamingo. I'd have to think on that a little bit more, but I really like those off the top of my head. Deshaun Comedy, thanks for the five. Favorite ticking time bomb for every One Piece arc, uh, such as Birdcage, Buster Call, Alabasta Bomb. Do you think it's a necessary it's necessary for a story to have one in order to build proper tension? <laughs> um, no, not for a story to have proper tension. I think Oda just really likes that as his go-to. Um, to add tension to the end of an arc. Um, and it's it's generally pretty effective. Uh, for me, Buster Call is awesome. I love the Buster Call. Because it's not even one that they're able to... The Buster Call is amazing because there's no solution to it. It is just... Like, Luffy and Luchi are still fighting, right? And it's like the sky is basically falling, right? Like, I mean, Usopp's saying, you know, even though we can still see the sky, even though there's, there's smoke and fire, right? But during the Buster Call, they're so ridiculously, hopelessly outmatched. It is just pure survival, right? Birdcage, like, there's so many great ones, right? Birdcage, Raigo, these are all, these are all um, really good taking time bombs. But Buster Call was one where it just felt as though there is no solution because there really wasn't. They can't defeat a Buster Call, right? They're just surrounded and overwhelmed. And I think the framing of it was very powerful too, which is it's just this tiny little crew of Straw Hats. And they're surrounded by throngs and throngs of just, uh, like, not just Marines, but giant warships and filled with Marines that are levels above them. Like, they're surrounded by vice admirals, right? The vice admirals don't get off the ship, but they could, right? They're sending in the foot soldiers first, and then captains and such are getting off as well. And it's just um, the most overwhelming scenario the Strats have ever experienced up to that point. And again, they're literally just trying to hold out. And they're surrounded by basically, like, an unbeatable force for them. Not even close. There's not a single... Like, one vice admiral could probably, if they got off the ship, could have wiped them out. Um... And they can't, they don't solve it. Like, that's the thing. Like, there is no, they can't defeat the Buster Call. They just hold out barely long enough for Luffy to beat Luchi. And even then, it's like, okay, well, now what do we do? They need a literal miracle in the form of the Going Merry to get out of the Buster Call. Because they can't do it themselves, right? There's no, there's no way out. The entire island is going down in flames. The entire island is um, falling apart, right? They're fucked. <laughs> and then this one in a million event that really shouldn't happen that defies logic but makes perfect sense in one piece happens where the going merry shows up and then they're able to get on the merry and then once they're able to get on the merry they still can't beat the buster call but thanks to sanji giving them an escape route thanks to nami being able to navigate through that escape route um getting through the whirlpools they are just like the skin of their teeth they're able to get away from the buster call so for me the buster call is perfect it just it fits so well into the idea that the straw hats have um, basically spat in the face of the world itself with any slobby. And what they're doing is just so... Like, any slobby is very powerful to me because it's it's really just them going into, lion's, into the lion's den where they don't have any hope of actual victory, but they just keep fighting and fighting regardless. And just through things working out for them, they're able to get away with it, even though all the odds are stacked against them, even though they can't actually defeat the world at this moment in time and the, it feels like the entire world is bearing down on them, they still just manage to get away with it 
by doing by like putting pretty much every aspect of uh, of what they can do on the line. Like, they have, they have to pull out all the tricks. Everyone gets fights. Uh, everyone's pushed to the absolute limit. Luffy can't even move by the end. Um, they have to get very lucky. They have to use lots of strategies and tricks. Uh, it, it, yeah, the Buster Call, I think that's just my favorite of the ticking time bombs because it's not a solvable one. There was no there was no solution to it at the... Like, they couldn't, they couldn't beat it or stop it at the end. They just barely squeaked out. They barely got away. Um, it, I think it definitely helped put the gravity of what they'd done with shooting the world government's flag into perspective because it felt like it was the Straw Hats versus the entire world while that was going on. Uh, JK Kane, thanks for being a Yonko tier member for 16 months. I always... Oh, no, we covered this. <laughs> covered this. Um, Ground Pound, thanks for the two. How does the tension in Egghead compare to Wano? I think it's a little early to tell. Um, it's going to depend on how... I think last chapter had a good amount of tension. But I think it's going to depend on... Again, I, I'm not holding Egghead to a certain stand... Like, Egghead is just the start of the final saga. I never expected it to be a very high-tension arc, right? The uh, expectations for Wano, I was comparing it to arcs like Alabasta and East Lobby, things like that, like significant story arcs, right? So Egghead, anything that we're getting is much more significant than you would expect for what essentially accounts for a warm-up arc for the, new, for the final saga, right? Um, so last arc felt serious in its tone. Um, a buster call is starting. Um, at the same time, I just don't feel like... the. I still feel like the Straw Hats' odds are feel pretty good right now. You know what I mean? Um, just because I feel like they're capable of handling this at this point. Um, we need to kind of see how Luffy's treating the situation, how serious it is for him. Uh, ultimately, the, the, the tension comes down to how much are the characters actually affected. How much tension the characters feel. Like, tension is uncertainty in whether or not characters are going to be able to get what they want, right? And it's established by how the characters themselves feel about the situation. If characters are, like, all in a great mood, carefree, don't view it as any trouble at all, there's no tension, right? Uh, so it's just going to depend on, you know, when we cut back to Luffy, how's Luffy feeling about this? Like, is Luffy just whatever? Um, like, Luffy was not really feeling tension in this arc up till now, right? Uh, how do the rest of the Strahds feel? How's the Zoro Lucci situation going? Tension is all about how the characters themselves are establishing uh, the tone of what they're going through. The tone of, of the stories, sorry, established by the amount of uncertainty the, the characters are feeling, the seriousness they view the situation, and that's where um, tension kind of comes from as well. Bear Sheriff, thanks for the 20. You hurt me with your opinion on animation. I'm a 3D graphics engineer slash VR engineer. I love all animation, and you'd be surprised how many of your favorite 2D shows have used 3D tech. It's hard to draw a line between the two. I could definitely... I mean, I I can't change my opinion on what I find beautiful, so I'm sorry to have insulted you, but uh, I could definitely understand 2D shows using 3D tech to create what they do, but I'm just talking about the final product, like the final image product. For me, there's a clear difference between if you're looking at something that uh, is made to look flat, right? versus something that's made to look uh, blocky in structure, right? Like, you can tell the difference between Lion King versus Toy Story, right? I get that there is overlap more nowadays between... Um, you can even see it in anime, like, some moments are made to look a little bit more three-dimensional and two-dimensional, but uh, ultimately, to me, the beauty of the animated art form is always going to be... It, I'm just never going to view the blockiness as beautiful. To me, it's just, it just seems very artificial. Um... I, I'm trying to say it in a way that, you know, it's not, it's my opinion, it's it's just my opinion, it's what I find beauty in, uh, for me, it's the moving painting, right, that's what I find, find beautiful in animation, um, honestly, if I think about the most beautifully animated moments from, from movies that are generally 3D animation, right, like, let's say, what are popular ones, like, Wally -E or a Frozen, um, or, uh, like a Moana, like some of the recent stuff, I can think back and like, I remember thinking when watching a lot of the moments in those movies, some of the most visually beautiful moments to me actually were mo moments where kind of it's a very wide shot. And what you see is um, directed or animated in a way that it actually looks 2D and not 3D. And it actually looks like a painting. Does that make sense? So it's almost like even the most beautifully animated moments in 3D animation to me, I wish I could find some examples. This is this was gonna actually gonna be a movie on Movie Morge, a video on Movie Morge way back in the day, but there are lots of moments in those movies where um, it's a shot from kind of far away and you're getting a very wide landscape view, 
and uh, it the movement is kind of done in a way that it looks almost as though it's painted and not 3D, right? So it's almost like, to me, the best moments in 3D are when it tries to almost imitate the visual that 2D naturally has. So, you know. <laughs> name, name, thanks for being a Pirate King tier member for 16 months. Damn, Mork, I'm such a solid, well-working mod. YouTube feels like it needs to give me a reminder that I am one. I got you with the stellar work. None. It's for real, for real, no problem. <laughs> uh, thank you. I appreciate you modding, uh, for sure. Uh, <laughs> does you Is YouTube reminding you that you are one? <laughs> I appreciate you modding, for sure. Uh, Spider-Verse, though, like, people are commenting Spider-Verse. Yeah, Spider-Verse is another great example. For me, like, a lot of the best shots from Spider-Verse are ones where it's large, wide landscape shots where the entire thing looks like 2D animation, not not close-up 3D animation. Like, I wish I could pull out... Let me see if I can even pull out some scenes from, from, Spider -verse, from Spider-Verse. I haven't seen the second one, but if you think of the finale of the first Spider-Verse movie, right, a lot of the beauty of what was happening with uh, the finale of the, the first Spider-Verse movie where reality's breaking and, you know, all of that shit's happening, it it doesn't look like blocky 3D animation. It doesn't look like something from Pixar or DreamWorks or whatever. It looks like 2D animation, right? It's the visual look of 2D animation. It's just done via 3D animation, as my understanding is. I think people are missing the point because people are bringing up Arcane. So if I remember Arcane's visuals, right? Arcane's visuals also fall under the category of what I'm talking Like, I don't care what the tool is for the type of animation, like whether it's 3D, whatever, hand-drawn, whatever. I don't really care what the tool is. Uh, I care about the aesthetic that is produced from it, right? The, the painting type aesthetic is what I find beautiful. Arcane seems to fit that as well. Spider-Verse fits that as well, right? If you take, when I refer to 3D animation, what I'm referring to, like the 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 visual that I'm referring to is stuff that is in like Pixar style stuff that is generally uh, Disney's newer style or DreamWorks's newer style, right? I'm never going to view that as, as beautiful as the moving painting style animation that we had in older days. And now we do have um, movie, like we do have things like arcane spider verse, et cetera, that are kind of blending the two. And they do produce that sort of moving painting effect that I still find really, really beautiful. If that makes sense, does that make sense? Sleeping Dangerous is blocky is a terrible way to describe it, which is why it sounds insulting. But it's literally, that's that's what it is. Right? <clears throat> Again, I don't care what the tools are. Um, I don't care what the tools are at the end of the day. Like, you can say, like, oh, this thing that you thought is 2D is actually 3D. I'm like, cool. Uh, I, I don't care what the tool was to get that look. I just like this look. I don't really find beauty in things like, again, like a Ratatouille, like, um, like I, I love Shrek. Shrek's an amazing animated movie. I love that movie. I don't think it's a visually beautiful movie. Not the way that I find like Lion King or Mulan to be a visually beautiful movie, right? Spider-Verse I find to be a visually beautiful movie, but it's definitely taking a lot of 2D aesthetic, right? And applying it to um, that style of animation, right? And that's what I personally find beautiful in animation. That's just me personally. <clears throat> I, again, like this is not knocking Pixar for others because I think Pixar has phenomenal stories and characters. Um, I just don't view the animation style as something that I would like because animation in animated movies for me, like a large part is the animated style. So if we ever did an animated movies tier list, you would just see my personal aesthetic bias showing a lot because I would probably dock a lot of Pixar movies or DreamWorks movies. I don't know if I'd put that many of them in like S tier, when a lot of them probably do deserve S tier, just because for me, um, I have a I have a bias um, towards a certain type of look. Man, what's this? That reminds me. Have you finally seen Arcane? No, no, I've not seen Arcane. Um, Schmike the Melts, thanks for the two. Do you like the Yakuza series? Ten out of ten games. New one. Uh, there was a girl I went on a date with recently who was really, really pushing Arcane because she was partway through it. Uh, so then I was like getting really, in like I was asking lots of 
like questions about the style and what she liked, etc. But then uh, we didn't go out again. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to watch Arcane. You know, it's one of those where like, okay, maybe I'll get into Arcane <laughs> because that's something that could be watched and then talked about. But if it didn't go anywhere, like I'm not going to watch it just to watch it at this point. So I'll probably watch it to watch it at some point. But uh, the window was there for a moment and now it just closed. Remix King, thanks for being a Yonko tier member for 12 months. I'm sorry I need to support my basketball team as they are down double digits against the Suns trying to avoid a seven game lose streak. See you in the VOD. No worries, Remix King. You will not be needed here. Uh, we're going to get into the uh, ARC MVPs in a second. In a second. Let me, let me set up Microsoft Paint. Let me set up Microsoft Paint for you guys. Um, I like Ratatouille. <laughs> I like Ratatouille. I'm I'm not trying to knock the Pixar movies. Every arc MVP. All right. All right, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick, and I'll be right back. All right, time for the main event. <clears throat> the MVP of Wano is clearly the bombs. No, <laughs> the bombs would be, I think, for the amount of... The bombs would have a case for MVP. They would have a case. Because it's like, the bombs single-handedly... You could argue in Wano, right, that the... Uh... In Wano, you could definitely argue that defeating the two Yonkor are the two most important things, right? And it's like, let's say... Each defeat, like in terms of the things that needed to be done in Wano, defeating each Yonko was like, like it carried a 25, like defeating Kaido is 25% of resolving the conflict, defeating Big Mom's like resolving 20% of the conflict or something. Like they were a huge, ch they were a big part of what it, of what resolving the conflict of Wano entailed, right? Obviously, the rest of the Beast Pirates and, um, yeah, the rest of the Beast Pirates taking them down and stuff like that, that matters as well. But Kaido and Big Mom probably make the majority, right? If you're, like, defeating... Okay, let's say you you say defeating Kaido constitutes 35% of resolving the Wano conflict. Defeating Big Mom constitutes 30%, all right? Well, as we all know, Kaido, you know, it, it took multiple people to do that one, right? Luffy, Zoro, um, other Supernova, like, a little bit. Uh, Yamato, other people were involved in, every, there were a lot of contributions to taking down Kaido, right? But then Big Mom, it was pretty much like, if you look at the Big Mom section, it was pretty much 90% the bombs that did it, right? So, 90% the bombs, what's 90% of like 30%? 
I should know that off the top. Is that 27? Am I crazy? I feel like it's 27. It's 90% of 30%. I don't know what 97%... What's 90% of 30%? Of 30%. 90% of 30%. I feel like I should know that like off the top, right? Yeah, it is 27. Okay. It seemed right in my head when I said it. I was just like... I don't know. Yeah, so that's 27%. So the bombs essentially did 27% of the work of Wano, right? So that's that's something to think about. The bombs could have the argument for MVP of Wano. The bombs definitely could have the argument for MVP of Wano. Um, but to keep it simple, we're just going to do straw hats. We're just going to do straw hats, otherwise it gets into a whole different ball game. It's, it's very complicated. All right. <clears throat> Also, let's get the stream likes up to 200 real quick. <laughs> All right. Um, every arc MVP. So here's how we're going to do this. Here's how we're going to do this because we're going to do this very, very legit. All right. Um, fuck. How do we do this legit? Okay. First, what we're going to do, we're going to do this. Okay. Okay. Here's how we do it. Here's how we're doing it. All right. So I'm going to have like a little uh, list over here, which is um, the arcs. All right. Obviously need those. So we got shell. Fuck. <laughs> How long have I been doing Microsoft Paint? I've been doing it for a little bit now, right? Arcs, we've got. I feel like this is too small. No, nah, it'll just about fit. Um, maybe black is best. Yeah, okay. No, it's called Romance Dawn, right? Romance Dawn. Um, in order, it's Romance Dawn, Orange Town, Syrup Village, Ratier, Arlong Park. Are we going to do the nitty gritty stuff? I, we're not going to do like Logue Town. Forget it. We're not going to do Logue Town. We're not going to do Reverse Mountain. Are, okay, do we do... Okay, someone, someone answer. Do we do the... We'll do the nitty gritty arcs. Why not? We'll do Logetown. We'll do Reverse Mountain. Whiskey Peak. Uh, Alabasta. Jaya. I was thinking if there's a post Alabasta. Jaya. Skypea. Here's what we're not going to do we're not going to do like post any slobby. All right? We're just going to do any slobby. Water 7, any slobby. Um, yeah. Do we do post Marine Ford, is all I'm thinking. In the meantime, Thriller Bark. Um, Sabodi. Amazon Lily didn't have any of the other straw hats. Impel Down had Jinbei, so Jinbei would get it by default. I'm just going to do Impel Down and Marine Ford. Because do we give Jinbei... He would get MVP for... He gets it by default, you know? He gets it by default. We'll, we'll do both. Impel Down. But I'm not doing post-Marine Ford. It's just... what Which draw... Who was an MVP in post-Marine Ford? Jinbei again. <laughs> Actually. Fuck. But it feels like it's all one storyline. Like, you know? Like, it's just... We can give Jimbe three MVPs in a row for Impel Down, Marine Ford, and Post Marine Ford. I mean, it's just it feels wrong because he's just getting it by default. I don't. We're not. We're not. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Um. Oh, did I skip Davy Backfight? I skipped Davy Backfight. My bad. Long ring, long. Yeah. Long ring. Uh, I'll just say Davy Backfight is shorter. My bad, my bad. Um, does Vivi count? Yeah, but I don't think Vivi would get it in Alabasta. I'd have to think. I don't. I don't think she would even get it. It's tricky. Vivi could technically get it in Alabasta. Breezy two X's don't do only strats. It's better that way. It just, it gets very very difficult if you don't do, if you, 
don't do only straw hats because then you're in skype and you're comparing like because people for like i I mean i do (laughs) i do this for a living and i can't tell you off the top of my head every single thing that gonfall did in skype i can't um he saves them from wiper at the beginning that's big he saves the actually gonfall does quite a bit he saves them from wiper at the beginning he saves them from Saves them from Wiper at the beginning. Saves them from uh, NL's blast while they're at, um, uh, where they're actually when they're actually on Skypea, because NL tries to kill Luffy, Sanji, uh, and Usopp. So he saves them from that. He saves Chopper from the priest. I think, and then he helps defeat like Hotori and Kotori. I think that's where most of his contributions end, but th- that's just a random example. I, I just went down that to, to see if I could actually think. But, like, I can't remember everything that... I mean, I could remember most everything Kiros did in Dressrosa. I could remember most everything Law did in Dressrosa. I, I, I couldn't remember everything Law did in Dressrosa. I can remember everything Kiros did in Dressrosa. Okay, I could do it. I think in Wano, I'd be a little... It'd be a little bit... No, in Wano, I could do it. I think I could do... No, it just gets complicated. It just gets complicated. Okay, because let me explain the way I was planning on doing this, right? The way I was planning on doing this is we have the arc list here. And then over in this space, we would have the straw hats list, all right? And what I would do is for each arc, we just write down what every straw hat did and then compare, right? So it would be indisputable, right? We'd be able to look at any slobby. I'd write down, uh, we'd have the list of Zoro, Nami, Usopp, Sanji, uh, Chopper, Robin, Frankie, etc., and I, we'd be able to write down. So I did this. Nami did this. Usopp did this, right? We just write it all down. Um, once we have it sorted out who did the best, cross it all off, move on to the next one, right? Erase, we get to keep the same template. But if we're doing every character per arc, then it's like we have, you just have to list so many characters on top of all the strides who are already doing a lot. And it just gets messy. It's like... Like, I'm, I'm, I feel like there's certain things I just wonder. Like, I'm trying to remember. Dalton, what did he do in Drum Kingdom? Dalton in Drum Kingdom, he was lead... Like, how do you how do you even assign points? Dalton was being the de facto mayor of the kingdom, of uh, Drum Kingdom, before the Strats showed up. So, does he get points for being the de facto mayor? Right? He's being the mayor. Then, Wapples people attacked. He took care of Wapples people. Um, and then he took over as king at the end of the arc. Does that make him MVP? That's, like, a lot of con- contributing, but a lot of it's, like, leadership stuff. Korea, I don't know. It's too much. We're, we're just going to do what I'm, I'm going to do. Um, I could break down what every major character does per arc, but it's just too messy. It's too messy. And plus, it's more fun, I think, with the Straw Hats to just compare at the end of the stream, like, who had the most MVPs out of the crew, right? <clears throat> Marine Forward. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do a post-Marine Forward. Because then it's just handing out Jinbei, like handing stuff out to Jinbei, right? Well, I'll do a quick poll. Do we depose Marine Ford or not? No, that's not worth worthy of a poll. Ah, shit. Do I do post Marine Ford or not? It's, it would just be Jinbei getting three MVPs just by default. I'll 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 do it, I guess. Um, we're not doing Luffy. I'll put the rules down in a second. Um, John six seven eight says, please no Jinbei in this list. His fat diversity higher ass has done nothing in the story so far. Also, only Straw Hat and Impel Down is Luffy. We're counting characters who become Straw Hats too. Um, Jinbei is a <laughs> his fat diversity ass higher has done nothing so far. Yeah, I feel like it's a little unfair because, like, at the end of at the end of the day, we're gonna have a list that shows Jinbei having won MVP three times, which is gonna seem like a lot, but it's all from just one little segment of the story, like a fifty chapter segment in the story, you know. <laughs> Use of saying fat fish. Uh, okay, we'll just do we'll just do one. We'll just do one. Jinbei has his best moment post Marine Ford, which is remi- like his speech to Luffy. But Jinbei also goes hard in Marine Ford with saving Luffy. You know, um, 
Sleeping Dangerous, Sleeping Dangerous have non-straw hats MVP only for Marine Ford Saga. But then it's easy too, because then it's just, I mean, then it's just like Bond Clay, Whitebeard, done, right? Uh, but I mean, I guess same thing. Like otherwise, we just default to Jinbei. Okay, we we can have a discussion when we get to Marine Ford, right? Um, return to Sabodi, Fishman Island, Funk, Hazard. Press. Rosa. It's a good thing the post time skip doesn't have too many arcs. Look at that, we're all caught up. Wano and Egghead, I think we can't determine an MVP just yet. I don't think we can do Egghead just yet. Um should we include Egghead or not? Including Egghead or no? Maguire Adams with a weird comment. Sanji and Jimbe would roll me over and pound me like a ragdoll. Okay. <laughs> what? Cosmic Cookie says Jimbe has done more for Luffy than the Straw Hats. So here's something it, it, there that is something to consider because for pretty much every Straw Hat in their origin arc, or at least their their main arc, right? Um. Like, Nami's arc, origin arc is technically Orange Town, but her main arc is Ar Arlong Park, right? No, I mean, I guess it's the same, right? Because Luffy's main arc, Jinbei's main arc is Fishman Island. I was going to say that Jinbei is the only one that saved Luffy instead of Luffy saving him. But, um, you know, like, Robin saves Luffy in Alabasta, and then Luffy saves Rob, like, saves Robin in any Slobby. So, ultimately, every Straw Hat is saved in some sense by Luffy. No Egghead Island, yes included. No, I'm seeing some mixed stuff. Um, let's not do Egghead. It's too, it's too soon to call. It's too soon to call. Um, like, we might get to Egghead three chapters down the line and Frankie rebuilds the Vega Force or something and gets them out of there or something. I don't know. Okay, so here's our list. And here's how we're doing it. So as I explained earlier, we're going to have uh, spaces for each straw hat, right? We'll make this nice and big. No, not Luffy. Zoro. Luffy is not allowed. Those are the rules. Luffy is not not allowed in this competition. Just would not be fair. You could arguably ar arguably give him the MVP for each one of these things, right? So we got Zoro, Nami, Usopp. This is just in order for them joining. All right. Okay, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna do the the notes as is. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll just put in notes that. Uh, what's the okay? So if I get rid of this, yeah, let me let me do this. I think this will work. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this will work. I'm pretty good at this now, using Microsoft Paint. All right. All right. We'll do text in red. We'll do text in red. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, this is going to be where we put down our arguments for them for each arc as we go arc by arc. All right? Um, Vivi? Yeah, I'll put Vivi in. I just don't think there's much of a point. No, because we'll, we can have the discussion when Alabasta rolls around. Um, yeah, we can have the discussion when Alabasta rolls around. What size did I do this? I don't know. Whatever the fuck, what, what was this color? Blue? Okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. Bomb clay too? No, we're not, <laughs> gonna have to throw the fucking going Mary in there, right? We're not doing that. Let's get the stream likes up to 200 real quick. Vivi in Drum Kingdom. That's true. She was in Drum Kingdom and Whiskey Peak and Little Garden. My bad. Yeah, Vivi will have a she'll have a shot in several of these islands. My mistake. My mistake. Okay. Romance Dawn is easy. It is Zoro though, right? Some of these are just gonna be simple. Zoro. Fuck. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. So for this, what was it? it was black. Size ten. Size what? Fourteen. 
Uh, we'll put this in red. Yeah, Romance Dawn of Azora. Alright. Can you guys see this? Is this visual? Is this like visually clear to you guys? You can see what I'm writing here, right? Because this is where all the strats are going to go. Uh, approve now before we just stick with this format for the rest of the series. Sanji's MVP for Zoro's MVP of Romance Dawn, right? I think there's there's not really a debate about that. It's just it's just that. <laughs> <laughs> Axolotl says Zoro's MVP of Baratier for losing the Mihawk and then crying. <laughs> Zoro does have the most memorable moments from Baratier. It's clear? No? Okay, we'll make it bold. What the fuck is this? Are you guys seeing this shit? What what is happening here? Hello? <laughs> Am I using... What the fuck is this? <laughs> what? This is clearly the eraser. What is happening? I'm actually confused as fuck right now. Does anyone know what the fuck this is? <laughs> I don't know what this is. Okay, uh... Erasable... I swear this should be turning it white, right? That's how the eraser works? See uh, their tools, tools. <laughs> Control Z. That's only gonna get us so far, because at some points, points I'm gonna have to erase things that are like over here. Holy shit! So the eraser just doesn't. Is there like whiteout? <laughs> just undo. I'm erasing the white. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Well, how do I just put in new white? Brush, brush it white. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Why is the, why is the brush not white? Brush. White. Red. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, all right. Let's start with let's let's do this first. All right, let's let's do that. But that's not gonna be the solution forever, because at some point I have to type over here. All right. Use the white pen. What what white pen? Watercolor brush. This seems promising. Ah, all right, there we go. Why is it not white? How white? Wh what the fuck? Okay, is there a separate color I have to select for this? Watercolor brush. <laughs> white. It. <laughs> still, still. Uh, okay. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, there we go. All right. Yeah. Now, the fuck. Okay. Okay. We need real brush. We're close. We're getting there. Real br Real brush. Selected white. That's not it. We need a thick ass brush. All right, oil brush. <laughs> okay. I'm stumped. I I think that Microsoft Paint has gone downhill. I swear there used to be a time that you could just. Can I do it like this? Can I select a? I can't select a color for the eraser. Just type it? What are you talking about? Oh, you're saying like Google search it? No. That would be a sign of defeat. Tell us this. Edit colors. I mean, I swear we're on white. Why is this erasing? You're saying it's erasing the, the actual fucking white background. I swear it did not used to do that. Just type and fix it at the end? No, that's not a... You don't understand, because I type everything here. All right, okay. If we're very regimented about this, this could work. But this could easily go off the rails, because... Um... Oh, wait, what about this? No, no, whatever, whatever. All right, all right. Let's. Okay, Boomer, you're saying? You don't know how to fix this either. I would love for one of you guys to suggest how I would go about resolving this issue. All right? If you guys are so fucking, whatever, Gen Z, tech savvy... Please explain to me how the fuck I erase something when the eraser tool is a fucking checkerboard. The fuck is this? All right. <laughs> this, is, this is... This is a whole new... <laughs> I thought that Microsoft Paint would slowly be getting more advanced with time. But I swear that this is actually devolving. It is actually less useful. Because my only question is... 
who the fuck has ever clicked the eraser and been like, you know what I would love? If I could just wipe away some shit and just leave a, a checker, a gray and black checkerboard trail or a gray and white checkerboard trail behind. That is what I want. How is this? Who would consider this to be erasing something? Huh? What? Who? This isn't even a racer tool anymore. It's just like a fucking, I don't know, checkerboard design brush. Why would they even, why would they introduce this tool? Khan says the issue is using paint as a text editor. Oh, so that's the issue. Thanks, genius. Thanks for troubleshooting this situation. Just use a different software. No, Microsoft Paint has a certain charm to it. That's why I stick with it, no matter how terrible it gets. We could just be cold, just robotic people using Google Sheets, just all numbers, binary code, zeros and ones, everything in a tight formulaic cells. But no, here you can draw things, right? Like this, I guess not. <laughs> like this. You know who I just drew? Guess who I just drew? Guess the character I just drew? It's Luffy. That's right. Can I draw Luffy <laughs> in Google Sheets? No, not like this. Not this poorly. So that's not an option. We have to stick with Microsoft Paint. But I want an eraser that works. That's all I want. Uh, <laughs> use Excel instead. No, Excel's too bo It's too visually boring. It sucks the fun out of the stream. Part of the fun of the stream is not being able to successfully do the things that we're trying to do. Um, checkerboard is a transparent layer. What is that? I don't even know what that means. What the? No, it's not transparent. I can fucking see it. All right. Click the plus at the top. What plus? What plus? There's no plus. This, this is just a zoom. You guys not know what zoom is? You guys are telling me I'm tech illiterate. All right. All that happens if we zoom is we get closer to seeing how little this works. All right, how do I get back to normal size? All right, there we go. Brush white tool, color size 10. All right, brush white tool, color, color size 10. So this is Jim Papp's uh, suggestion. So we're gonna use the brush tool. White, white, select white. Okay. Size, eight. Does it go down further? Eight, okay, eight's the best we got. There we go. All right, everybody. Jim Pap, you're a mod. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Jim Pap, for uh, proving your future usefulness. <laughs> Wait, fuck. I can't. Okay, okay, there we go. That's the solution, everybody. Use the brush tool. Okay, everybody learned something here today. All right. Uh, Jim Pap, everyone, shout outs to Jim Pap. Thank you very, very much. We learned that if you want to do anything in Microsoft Paint and then get rid of it down the line, and it's not the most recent action you just did, so you can't just control Z. Let's say you want to erase a previous action that you did like 15 steps ago. Use the brush tool, select white, and you go to size eight. All right. Everyone, um, congratulate Jim Pap. He is a genius among idiots. All right. Or I guess just like a person of normal intelligence amongst idiots. All right. But he was able to figure it out and tell us. So moving on. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Let's, let's, uh, <laughs> let's uh, recalibrate here. All right. So this should be good. <laughs> right. Zoro, can you guys see that? Jim Peps is gonna join your crew now. You're in the crew. You're a mod. Rai says LMAO, LMAO nowhere we we're using the brush tool to erase. Well, the eraser tool does jack shit. It actually just fucks it up even more. Bird said, Bird School says this is aggravating. I could fix this when I was 14. Well, you were a lot smarter when you were 14 because you offered zero useful advice today at whatever age you are right now. Jim Pap is the only person who was able to figure out the inner mechanisms of Microsoft Paint. The smartest of us all. All right, Orange Town. Um, fuck. What happens in Orange Town? So, Zoro's big in Orange Town. Zoro's really big in Orange Town because he saves Luffy and Nami from Buggy's crew. So they're captured. I think it's just Zoro again. Nami contributes a little. No, Nami actually fucks them over a bit more than necessary in Orange Town because she's the reason that they get in trouble in the first place. She kidnaps Luffy, takes him to Buggy. <laughs> Luffy's in a cage. 
Uh, Zoro gets injured because he's having to fight Buggy while Luffy's in the cage. Otherwise, Luffy could be fighting him. Most of the problems of Orange Town are due to Nami. She does help towards the end with helping Luffy take care of Buggy, but let's be honest, Luffy would have taken care of Buggy. Anyway, uh, yeah, Zoro has to save them. Zoro essentially saves them almost single-handedly um, initially. So that's a big deal. And then obviously the regular contribution of Karabo. I'm oh, sorry, not Karabo, Kabaji. Okay. Zoro takes it for Orange Town as well. Syrup Village. Nami tied up Buggy. Yeah, that's true, but it's like... Luffy had already essentially beaten him. You know what I mean? Luffy had beaten him. She tied up Buggy. Um, I don't think that's more points than Zoro essentially saving them from all of Buggy's crew in the first half. So, fun fact. I've mentioned this before on stream. But the first episode scene... First scene I saw of One Piece. First scene ever that I saw of One Piece. Can anyone guess what it, what it is? The first scene was Zoro saving them from Buggy's crew. That's the first time I ever saw One Piece on TV. I was a little kid. It was coming on Cartoon Network. Uh, and it was just this insanely slow-paced scene. I think I mentioned this before, but that's the thing that sticks out the most when you see anime for the first time compared to other cartoons is it's just so slow paced like the entire scene the tension is just so drawn out it really feels like when you're a kid and you're comparing that to like a teen titans episode or like a ben 10 episode where things fucking fly by fast like to, to a full story arc in 20 minutes where it's like hey we've got this problem and then there's this bad guy and there's this situation and blah 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 and then the fight itself will be like two minutes at the end right to sit and watch an episode where it's just like this dude's in a cage, but he's in the cage for the entire fucking episode. And it seemed like the, the tension just feels so high because it seems like, oh, fuck, like, how are they going to get out of this? Like, they're just stuck and stuck and stuck. And like the Zoro guy can't beat um, the buggy character because the buggy character can split apart. It was really cool. J Press P, thanks for the five. Imagine Morge with Jola or Contra's Fruit. Worst Devil Fruit ever. <laughs> MVP ranking at the end. <laughs> we'll do the MVP ranking at the end, yeah. Um... If you guys want to argue uh, Orange Town, like, I don't think there's much to argue because it's just, like, look, it's, um, what Zoro does, is, Zoro's contribution is saving crew essentially single-handed from entire buggy pirates carrying, uh, Luffy's cage, defeating Kabaji, right? That's all fairly big. That's a lot, right? Nami, she she got them in this, <laughs> gets Luffy, captures Luffy, and gives him the buggy. Um, but she then light, so she gets them in that situation. But then she lights the match for the the, um, for the cannon. But that's like after Zoro has done all of the work of first saving Nami, right? Like, uh, I don't think people like you really can't underplay all of this, right? This is. Uh, chapter, what, 8 or something like that? Maybe 10? Um, like, so what happens is Nami's about to die. Okay, so she stops the cannon. I forgot about that. She stops the cannon. So that's big. I gotta add that for her. But then, really, the rest of it is Zoro. Right, Zoro takes them out, saves Nami. Um, then Zoro gets stabbed. Uh, Zoro's having to... Where are we at? Yeah, Zoro's having to fight off Buggy while injured. Nami doesn't... She's not really contributing much here. Zoro flips the cannon. Nami lights it. But this is essentially Zoro coming in, saving their ass when they were screwed, right? And then Zoro puts Luffy on his back, carries the cage... That otherwise would not be movable. Gets them out of there. I, I don't think you can really argue against Zoro being the MVP uh, against Nami this arc, right? And again, like, I, I advocate Nami plenty for other stuff, as you guys know. Um, I think that she should get points for navigation. But uh, I don't think that she contributes that. Like, she gets them in the problematic situation, that arc, in the first place. 
Um, the reason Zoro is injured, the reason Luffy got captured, etc., it is due to Nami. Um, I don't think you can say she's the most valuable player there. Um, she does tie a buggy again, but Luffy had won the fight basically on his own. Um, yeah. All right. Syrup Village. Let's talk about Syrup Village. Zoro losing the... Uh, so I let's establish one thing really quickly. Um, let's establish it for the future of the stream. So people are saying Zoro gets low diff by Buggy. It's not about their success relative to to themselves like the standard you expect or whatever right um it's just objectively like forget names you got to forget names it's just character a b c etc right so it's not like oh zoro got low diff by, by buggy it's like if you're going by that logic like zoro character a took care of the three pirates that were that character b nami was losing to right yes zoro did lose to buggy but objectively overall he contributed a lot more in that situation than nami right if you're gonna clown on zoro for losing the buggy like nami was fucked over by like just a couple of buggies henchmen so you can't really it's just they're flat like ignore who the character is talk about what they did overall right um it's the same way that zoro fighting luchi right now you could say that, oh, that's a bad look for Zoro, but objectively, it is contributing a lot more than the other characters who can't even do anything against Luchi, right? So it's not uh, it's not relative to uh, what you think they should get a W or an L or whatever. It's just objectively blank, blank character names, right? Ignore their reputation or what they're supposed to be doing. Just what do they factually contribute, right? <clears throat> All right. Um, what are we doing here? Yeah, Nami is the MVP of many arcs. She's the MVP of many arcs that people underestimate, but I'm not going to give her MVP for Orange Town when, like, again, it's a character that, like, she's a character could not do that. She got them in the situation in the first place of being stuck against the Buggy Pirates. She couldn't do anything against the Buggy Pirates, really. Zoro, like, character B, Zoro comes in, saves them from the buggy pirates, holds out against the captain long enough to at least flip the cannon, and then that is basically what reverses the situation against the buggy uh, pirates, and then he carries Luffy out of there, right? You would say no matter what, character B contributed way more than character A, character B is who saved them from that situation, right? Then after that, cap character B takes care of the vice captain, or the second hand member of Buggy's pirate crew, right? Um, it's just more contribution than Nami does that arc. Sir Village, it's a tricky scenario. Um, let's see. So for Zoro, um, defeats Sham slash Bucci, um, helps Usopp take out Django, right? Radman says, rank the East Blue antagonist, Morch-san. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, can I call you out, Fiji still, dude? That's just what I know you as. But um, I appreciate the donation. Ranking the East Blue antagonists, like, in terms of how good I think they are, I don't think any of the East Blue antagonists are that good as antagonists. I think they're all pretty, like, one-dimensional characters. I mean, it's like, it depends how much do you value them down the line. Like, Arlong gains depth down the line, or at least more interesting aspects to why his character is the way he is. Um, Buggy obviously becomes a really cool character around the cross guild period of time um, with some really good scenes. But if I'm saying like as antagonists back then, I feel like Krieg is the worst, but it's a low bar. I, I, I don't know. I guess Arlong's the best just about. None of them are particularly good antagonists. They're, they're all pretty average. Um, Arlong just because, I mean, he was the most cruel and effective of the bunch. Um accomplished the most was the most intimidating force drove the most dramatic storyline stuff like that but again they're, they're all pretty simplistic uh simplistic characters um yeah zor defeats shaman vuchi helps usopp take out Django. what does nami do here she gets gets uh she, okay so she kind of helps usopp 
helps Usopp briefly for like for like five seconds against the um, black cat pirates before losing wakes up Luffy which is big gets Zoro back his swords um, oh but then Zoro also helps also helps defeat like half uh, like one third of the black cat pirates I think this is just gonna be a Zoro one I think it's gonna be a Zoro one um, yeah because like he and Luffy return and they just take out a bunch of the black cat pirates then Luffy gets hypnotized he takes out the rest yeah I just don't think there's enough contribution from Nami over here I think it's just a Zoro and Usopp really did very little in his own arc okay all right, the early stuff is simple. We're going to get to the complicated stuff in a second. So Zoro's taking some of the early ones. Baratier. I think Baratier is a Sanji arc, right? I think Baratier is Sanji because Zoro doesn't contribute that much. I don't think we need to go through the list here exactly. Tom Tom says, not going to lie, you've missed a lot of supers, but I could be wrong. I'm 75% paying attention. I think I've caught most supers. Let me, or most, I think I've caught all. Let me, let me double check. Maybe I missed some. Fuck, I missed a bunch. Okay. Hold on. Let me catch these. Um, uh, Schmike the Melts, thank you for the two. Do you like the Yakuza series? 10 out of 10 games, new one is fire. I've never played them. They look cool. Um, just never played them. I think that... So, if it's the series I'm thinking of, let me load it up. Um... Yeah, I... I think I'm just not as interested in games that take place in real world type settings like cities and stuff but maybe that's just I guess the closest I've ever played I played like Arkham at a friend's house right and even that's like not a real world that's like Gotham but I, I think I just don't care for like the realistic city type setups um I think I'm biased towards just wanting to play in fantasy worlds don't know what that says about me um escapism I don't know so, uh, but I believe that they're really good. Bear Sheriff, thank you for the 10. I also hate that Pixar's plastic photo reel look. You just prefer one style over another, which is normal, and we have the same taste in that regard. But clearly, you don't shun 3D as a medium. Yeah, I don't care about the tool. Um, I, I care about the look that comes out of it. It's just that I associated that look with 3D for so long. Sorry for the late response to this. Um, don't know why it took me so long to catch these, but I was missing some supers. But yeah, man, I'm not trying to disrespect your work because I think anybody that has a career in animation is like, that's a very, any artistic career is impressive because it's just hard to find a, like an actual career in that field. So not trying to disrespect your work, just the style that I prefer. Um, Pen Pal 1058. Thank you very much. Hey, Mork, just got the black fruit of the devil shirt in the mail. Love how it's more of a low key piece. I'll catch the VOD at work tomorrow. Zora greater than Lucci. Thank you for shouting it out. Um, I will drop it for the people here as well. I'm glad that you enjoy it. Again, I think it's legitimately good, <coughs> legitimately um, a nice piece of, piece of clothing that is... Because for me, I did not want anything that was that I would not be okay with wearing outside. To me, I think it looks cool on its own. Um, and I'm glad that a lot of people enjoy it. I will drop a link right here for anybody who is interested. Um... Yeah. Hmm. I'll just drop the link to everything here. Uh, yeah, but it's more of a low-key, one-piece inspired design, if anyone's interesting, interested. No one disagrees that Baratia is Sanji? Yeah, we'll get that. Um, and thanks, it was Tom Tom, right, who told me I was missing some? This is my bad, man. Um, but yeah, uh, check it out. I think it looks good. I do genuinely wear it um, in like in public spaces that are not anime spaces because I just think they look good. Uh, I prefer the Fruit of the Devil over the hockey one for sure. Uh, Tom Tom, thanks for the two. Gin with the dev with Devil Fruit smoothie injection needle gun <laughs> versus Saturn. Uh, um, I'll take gin. Yeah, I'll take gin. Smoothie injection, devil fruits. Yeah, I'll take gin because it's clear that Saturn is okay with taking 
hits from things. So the Devil Fruit thing should kill him, unless he has immortality, which he might. Uh, Breezy2x, thanks for the two. Don't do Straw Hats, it's better than that way. Yep, not doing just Straw Hats. Um, wait, don't do only Straw Hats, it's better than that. No, no, we covered all this. We covered all this. I am doing only Straw Hats because we just have to. Um, yeah, I missed, I missed those. My bad. Okay, I'm all caught up now. I'm all caught up now. Yep, yep, yep. All caught up now. Sorry about that, guys. My mistake. All right. We got Sanji here for Bratier. Pretty straightforward, right? No one else really has an argument. Arlong Park. I think we might be looking at Sanji for Arlong Park as well. Does anyone disagree? I think it's Sanji for Arlong Park. Because Sanji... Zoro does not do much in Arlong Park, right? Zoro in Arlong Park, what does he do? He defeats Hachi, right? Defeats Hachi, helps stall Arlong. Uh, 1v1, even for, like, 30 seconds. Uh, like, there's a little bit bit there where Sanji has to go um, help Luffy. But Nami, we're not going to include. She doesn't really... That's that's her arc to be saved, right? Um... Sanji takes out Kurubi, who is the vice captain, I believe. I think Kurubi was the vice captain of the Arlong Pirates, not Hachi. This is something that people don't talk about too often, but it's like, okay, every arc Zoro takes out the number two, Sanji takes out the number three. I'm pretty sure Kurubi was Arlong's number two. He also had a higher bounty than Hachi, which you pretty much never see the number two of an arc have. Or the number three of an arc have over the number two of a of a pirate crew. Um, like usually we kind of just by default we're like, yeah, the first mate is the one with the highest bounty, right? Um, so actually, yeah, that's a fun little fact that early like there is an instance uh, for a significant arc in One Piece where Sanji actually gets the the W against the number two of the arc over Zoro. Zoro did solo all the Fishman pirates. I forgot about that. <laughs> that was fun. That was really funny. Does low div Arlong's <laughs> entire crew except officers? That was funny. He does low diff the entire crew except the officers. Um, so that that gives him a bit of an argument. He's back in it. Um, Sanji helps take out Momu at the beginning. Um, takes out Momu at the start of the arc. But it's not really, yeah, that's that's a thing. It's small. Like, if we're giving them the, the the fun things that don't really have an impact down the line. Because Arlong's crew is back up and fighting, I'm pretty sure, for the finale of the arc. Um, just like Momu is, but if we're mentioning those things. Meek, thanks for the thanks for the 10. What are your thoughts on Vivi becoming the chief of staff for Luffy when she rejoins the, cl the crew? It has a diplomatic role. Plus, if she gets Kuma's fruit, she can zip through the Grand Fleet to send messages. I really, so I've always, I, I put out the theory, I do think that Vivi will be getting the paw fruit, and that will be her role, um, rejoining as the chief of staff, so I don't really know if chief of staff makes sense as a role for pirate crew, but yeah, maybe ambassador or something like that, but I get what you're saying, I think that that could make a lot of sense, a lot of people have been talking about how the reunion of Vivi could take place with the Straw Hats this arc, just because it's possible that Morgan's is in the vicinity. Uh, I think this would be the perfect time for it to happen, if it's going to happen. And, uh, yeah, like, just rejoining temporarily. It'd be fun to see some of her interactions, like, with Robin nowadays. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of a title for something, like, other than Chief of Staff, I guess. But, um, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I think that she could join in some sort of a role along those lines. Yeah, Nami didn't do anything. Sanji takes out Momu. Okay, then uh, what else does he do? Defeats uh, Kuru. Yeah, no, we covered that. Um, helps stall Ar... What the fuck? Helps stall Arlong. Um, freeze Luffy. That's the big one. Freeze Luffy. And I think one thing to note is... Um, I think in the Arlong Park battle itself... Like, if we go to chapter, what, like, um, yeah, if we look at the Arlong Park battle itself, right, just quickly taking a look back, I feel, I've, I've got a feeling it's a Sanji situation, um, 
Yes, yeah, Sanji's the one that takes care of the fodder that attack here. So Zoro already took... Yeah, so Sanji takes care of the fodder here. Zoro already took care of fodder there. Um, takes care of fodder at the beginning of fight. I'm leaning Sanji towards this. I feel like it's pretty clearly him, right? I think taking out Kurubi is a little bit more important than taking out Hachi here. Um, Sanji and Zoro both helped start, stall Arlong. Sanji did free Luffy. Um, they both took out some of the lower officers. I think that it's... Uh, yeah, I think it's Sanji. Coast Coast says, Arlong got afraid of Zoro, not Sanji. So let's be very, very clear here. We're talking just... Obje it's not who looks more impressive in battle or anything like that, okay? Yeah, Zoro got more of a hype moment in, like, hyped-up moment praise from the villain, right? MVP is purely what are the what are the contributions that you put down, right? Like, yes, it, like, getting praise is not a contribution to your team's efforts, right? Um, it's just factually put it on the sheet. What are the things you did to help your crew achieve like their objectives or help people survive, things like that. It's just factual objective accomplishments. What are the points that you put up on the board, right? That's what we're doing MVP on. Um, it's not like who gets more hype or praise. Zoro is generally going to, like he's the second strongest, right? He's going to get more hype and praise in general than Sanji. That's not what we're basing MVP on. Otherwise, you can just give it to Zoro every arc. Uh, like every other arc, someone's like, oh, Zoro, he's so strong. He's so capable. Oh, let's make him MVP. That's not what MVP is, right? Dick's so small, I piss on my balls. Thanks for the five. Lafitte is the chief of staff for Blackbeard. Meek and I cooked that together. Oh, fuck. All right. Then we got it. Yeah. I think that that's a really great idea then. Especially because Luffy's crew itself is getting so big, the Grand Fleet. All right. I thought Lafitte, Lafitte is the navigator of the Blackbeard Pirates, unless I'm crazy. Lafitte roll Blackbeard Pirates. Let's see. Um, yeah. Oh, navigator and chief of staff. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so it's a thing. Yeah, it's Sanji. I'm going to put Sanji down for this. Justin Hone, thanks for the five. How soon do you think it will be before we'll see the Minx again and what their connection to Nika is? Could Egghead trigger the War for the Seas? How soon do I think it will be before we see the Minx again? I don't know if we're going to see the Minx anytime soon. When we first got the Minx, I felt like they're really important. But now over time, I feel like they're not that important. Really, like They just felt like another group of characters in Wano amidst many. Um, I feel like Zunisha is the really important one at the end of the day. Could Egghead trigger the War for the Seas? I do think that Egghead, the Egghead incident, could be a big trigger, especially if it's something that releases information to the world. I did a video on that some time back. Um, so I do think Egghead's got a tremendous potential there. That being said, Minx, I don't know if they get involved anytime soon just because of Egghead or whatever, but I think that Minx... Um, yeah, I think that the Minx, I think they'll be relevant again when it's time for Strats to get allies or when it's time for Zunisha's stuff to kind of be a little bit uncovered. Big Al says Zoro defeated every non-officer member of the Arlong Pirates, plus Hachi. No, but I just pulled up, like, uh, during the final battle, like, Sanji also took care of a bunch of the fodder. Zoro, I guess, took care of everyone that was at Arlong Park before, whereas Sanji took care of everyone that was, like, outside of Arlong Park who had left the village with Arlong. I don't think... I think it's splitting hairs once you get into that. Um, like, Sanji also took care of Momu. If you remember. Um, okay. Loketown. I don't think Usopp did anything of note. Zoro and Sanji, they both tried to save Luffy from the execution stand. They both failed, but they both fought their way towards there. 
Um, Zoro Fatashigi. So I guess that's something. I guess Nami getting them out in the storm is big. Like, well, let's write it down, right? Um, fought to what? I swear this wasn't this small before. Let's see. What the fuck? Am I crazy or is this? Yeah, whatever. Uh, fought. Uh, buggies subordinates at execution stand. Defeated Tashigi, right? Um, Sanji, it's the same minus defeating Tashigi, so it's not Sanji here. Unless Sanji did something I'm forgetting. I don't think that's the case. Um, Usopp shot, like, uh, Usopp shot someone. I think he shot, he shot, like, Richie or something like that. Right? He shot the... <laughs> Let me see. He... Oh, yeah. It's this. Okay, so... <laughs> it's this scene. So, Smoker's bike is cool. I forgot about Smoker's bike. You should pull that out more often. So, they're trying to start a fire. <laughs> Usopp shows up. He slips and hits that. Uh, the lion is mad. Usopp shoots the egg. The lion goes to eat the egg. Richie goes to eat the egg. So that's big contributions from Usopp there. So Usopp does take care of... Ri Usopp, Usopp takes care of Richie and Mohiji. That's actually pretty big. Is that bigger than taking care of Tashigi? There's an argument. It's kind of big for Usopp. And then let's see this. Let's see this. I'm just seeing uh, the storm is pretty bad. I don't think it ends before the navigation really kicks in, right? It ends before the navigation really kicks in. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say it's either Usopp or Zoro. I don't think Nami contributes much here. Either Usopp or Zoro. More just a Ratatouille hater. I like Ratatouille a lot. Again, I think Pixar's movies, their characters and stories are great. Um, Ratatouille... Yeah, Ratatouille's a good movie. I like Ratatouille. Um, Ratatouille was such a good movie that there have been... On, like, several... Okay, so Ratatouille came out, like, what? Like, two decades ago or something like that, right? So the movie and the name Ratatouille left such an impression on me... That obviously after the movie comes out, I I Google Ratatouille just to see what the dish is. The dish looks terrible. I'm like, uh, this looks fucking nasty. I'm not going to eat that, right? Every so often, every few years, I forget how bad Ratatouille looks and what it's actually made of. And I will just get it in my head. I'm like, fuck, man. I really want to try eating that, that Ratatouille dish from Ratatouille. And then I'll Google or YouTube like a video about Ratatouille, like the dish Ratatouille. And then I'll see again just how nasty it looks. And I'm like, okay, no, never mind. I keep forgetting this. This shit is terrible. So I'm like, no. But every, like, I swear it happened this year. This last year, I was just thinking about Ratatouille. And I'm like, I know it's bad. And I know what it looks like. I know it just looks like a bunch of little vegetables, like, put in a circle. And it's not a real dish. Um, and I was like, I know it's bad. I know I won't like it. I know I won't like the look of it. But Maybe I'm misremembering. So then I'll Google again and I'll look at it like a YouTube video again of like Ratatouille and really try and convince myself that it'll be good. It's not. Every time you look at the actual dish Ratatouille, it's terrible. I can't imagine actually ordering that at a restaurant. Um, thank God that that food critic in the movie Ratatouille had a special soulful connection to the dish from his childhood because otherwise the entire restaurant would have been fucking shut down. Okay. So they got very lucky there. But that just goes to show kind of the impact that the movie Ratatouille had on me, which is that it tricked me into thinking that the dish Ratatouille might be good, and it triggers this cycle for me every five to six years, where I actually, like, forget what the dish really looks like, look up again just to check maybe it's good. No, it's not good. Okay, forget it for the next five to six years. Anyway. Um... <clears throat> Shaq says it looked it looked tastier in the movie. Yeah, like that's credit to Pixar's animation style because they make it look really good. In the movie, it looks amazing. 
that's the thing. Like, the movie is what makes you think it looks really good in real life or tastes really good in real life. No. Look it up in real life. It's literally just the tangiest vegetables put together in a circle with tomato sauce or something like that. Cannot imagine eating that. If you like ratatouille, props to you. I just know looking at it, it does not fit with my 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 taste palette, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Dick so small, I piss on my balls. Thanks. I know he can't be MVP, but teach of all people dropping a thesis statement of the entire series in Jaya is still insane. Honorable mention. Yeah, a lot of these arcs you can throw in an honorable mention for sure. Um, like Dragon would be the MVP of Loketown if we were doing that. But, you know. <clears throat> Alright, Loketown. Um, we're going to do... Yeah, Loketown. <coughs> Sorry. Loketown, it's either Usopp or Zoro. Because Usopp defeats Mohiji slash Richie. I'm not going to say he saves the Sunny, because the Sunny wasn't going to be set on fire <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, but defeating Moijin and Richie, that's like a big deal. Pac-Man lover123 says, Morge looks like a guy who would hate vegetables. Yeah, I don't like vegetables. Um, I don't like vegetables. I'm not a vegetable person. On weekends, I don't eat vegetables. It's actually like a, a, th a thing. But I, I eat lots of healthy foods throughout the week. Um, <coughs> it's just the week <coughs> weekends. I literally make a point. I just don't eat any vegetables Saturday and Sunday. I'm not eating, eating any fucking vegetables. Let's be honest here. Like, like we don't need to go with your favorite character. I know there are going to be a lot more Zoro fans than, than Usopp fans. Although there might be some enough Zoro haters to counterbalance the Zoro hate the Zoro fans. So there's always that to consider. Um, at the end of... Okay, so Usopp fight... Uh, Zoro helps defeat a lot of Buggy's crew. Defeating Tashigi. Defeating Tashigi. Defeating Tashigi versus defeating Moiji and Richi. It would be a pity win for Usopp because I feel like he's not going to win a lot of these. It's tough. It's a tough call, man. I think it might be a... I don't want to give out pity wins. I want to be objective, right? This is like... You know, this is like when MVP voting gets difficult. Um, Talos says him and Sanji took out dozens of dudes yeah 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 again like you gotta look at it objectively right cause uh I mean I'm even falling into the trap here where I'm like oh Zoro took out some fodder that's not a big deal but that's cause it's Zoro so for me it's just like of course he's supposed to take out the fodder so I'm weighing Tashigi etc versus Moji and Richie, but you have to include the fodder because it's objectively what did they do, right? Character A took out like half of Buggy's crew. It's a big deal. All right, we'll give it to Zoro here, but it's tight. Do we want to do any shared MVPs? No, no, they don't do shared MVPs in the real world. We're not doing shared MVPs here, unless it's the All Star game, but this isn't the All Star game. First Mountain is easy, it is Nami. Gets them up the mountain. Learns the log post at the bottom, which nobody else can learn. Um, yeah, it's Nami. Whiskey Peak. Zoro. Zoro's easy if Whiskey Peak. Ah, oh, shit. He's just gonna... Fuck. It is... The rest of the crew is fucking sleeping. Alright, Little Garden. Little Garden. Zoro is frozen. He's a statue for this one, so he cannot be a contributor. Sanji doesn't help. This is an Usopp. This is an Usopp. Little Garden is an Usopp. Little Garden is an Usopp. No debates there. Little Garden is clearly an Usopp. For those of you forgetting, Usopp um, is basically, like, Usopp saves all of them. He saves Zoro, Nami, and Luffy, who are all, um, Zoro and Nami are trapped. It's only Usopp and Luffy are free. Luffy is trapped by Miss Golden Week. It's all down to Usopp. He has to stop the candle. He has to take out Mr. Five. He has to, it's basically him just running around with, it's him, it's, it's the Usopp and Karu arc. It's the Usopp and Karu arc, basically. Religion debates island. These Admiral fans are coping. Luffy beat Kizaru. Um, I don't think we're even talking about that right now. I don't think we're talking about that. All right. Sanji? Sanji's Mr. Pr uh, I think you guys are forgetting. Sanji had a phone call with Crocodile, but he's not actually relevant to the conflict of the arc. Like, Sanji's just separate. He has the phone call with Crocodile, but he doesn't really do anything for the arc. The, the conflict of the arc is taking on Mr. Three and Ms. Golden Week and Mr. Five uh, and Ms. Valentine. Like, the entire conflict is basically, holy shit, Zoro, Vivi, and Nami are going to die. Luffy's stuck, trapped by Ms. Golden Week. Like, go reread 
uh, all of Little Garden. Little Garden is entirely an Usopp arc. It's a very Usopp-centric arc. Sanji is essentially not really relevant for most of that arc. He has the phone call with Mr. with Crocodile, obviously, and that sets up for Alabasta, where Sanji will have a very strong case for the MVP, but it, it's not it's not Little Garden. Like, Little Garden is literally written, to, like, reread the arc. It's written to be an Usopp arc. He's, like, the main character of the entire arc. He also defeats Mr. 13. Yeah, but we're not going to... That's nowhere close to as important as defeating um, uh, the actual officer agents, right? The top agents. Although he does get the log post. That is a big deal. Okay, so it's an argument. Getting the log post is a big deal. But again, like, if you look at the actual full story of the arc, it's pretty much all Usopp. Like, he's the entire reason that they're able to escape. He's the person that, like, all of them are trapped. Like, all the Strats are trapped. It's just Usopp and Karu up against, like, all odds. They're bas it, it's basically a story written for them to, to succeed where none of the other Straw Hats can. I, I think it's hard to argue against that there. But Sanji getting the Log Post is a big deal. It is definitely a big deal. Then Log Town is Luffy's arc? Yeah, every arc is Luffy's arc. Like, we're, we're not including Luffy. Notice Luffy's not in this list. Alexander says, Sanji stumbles upon Mr. Three's hideout in Little Garden and is able to stop Baroque Works reinforcements from coming. He tells Crocodile that everything is just fine and that Luffy has been dealt with. Yeah, that's that's very good support stuff for sure, but you can't really argue against the actual hard conflict of the arc itself, which is defeating Mr. Three, uh, Mr. Five, Ms. Valentine, Ms. Golden Week. Like, Sanji is instrumental for sure in making sure that worse things don't happen down the line, getting the log posts. But his role and contribution is ultimately um, secondary, right? Usopp's the primary solver of the conflict, like the real problem of the arc, which is dealing with them, saving the Straw Hats who are being turned into wax statues, right? They're all saved thanks to Usopp. Like, that's that's basically um, his contribution, right? Getting the um, uh, getting it set up so that the cake can be, or the, the wax thing can be set on fire, Right, taking on Mr. Five, he just rescues out the he rescues the entire Straw Hats. I strongly suggest go reread it because I think it's impossible to reread everything Usopp did there, um, and think that Sanji had more of a contribution because that was very much a like Sanji side support arc. Like if there was a secondary MVP, you'd give it to Sanji, but again, you could argue that Usopp was more important than even Luffy this arc. You know. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, San you want me to give it to prematurely to Sanji and Alabasta? I'll give it to Sanji and Alabasta. Uh, I think Sanji's definitely out MVP in Alabasta. Because um, everyone had about the same contribution across the board in Alabasta aside from that, right? Um, in Alabasta, they all, uh, you know, they all take out an agent of their own. Yeah, they all take out an agent of their own. Um, they all help taking, that, out, taking care of the bomb at the end. Um... Sanji obviously takes out, uh, yeah, yeah, they all, they all take care of the agents, um, Sanji takes out one of the, the second strongest agent, and then the entire Mr. Prince thing is pretty damn big, it's, like, really big. Drum Kingdom, so Usopp is not an option here, Zoro doesn't really help here either, Sanji might be Drum Kingdom also, I think Sanji's Drum Kingdom also. Oh, no, Chopper, 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 <laughs> Chopper. <laughs> I forgot that we got a new member of the crew. We got a new member of the crew. Chopper. Fucking Chopper, duh. Any arguments against Chopper and Drum Kingdom? Curious People, right? Which was a big part of it. Curious People um, helps defeat Wapple, resolve the conflict of the story, um, saves the Strahds at the top of the mountain, right? When Luffy's pretty much done. Vivi for Drum? What does Vivi do in Drum Kingdom? What does Vivi do, do in Drum Kingdom that's so huge? Am I forgetting something big? What what does Vivi do in Drum Kingdom that's so big? big? Vivi got them on the island. V 
Vivi got them on the island, but then Chopper cures them. Like, okay. She gets them on the island. If she did, like, one other thing, it would be there. Gets them on the island. That's that's good. One other thing. I think I need one more thing from her. Because, like, Chopper saves them at the mountaintop. Cures them. Kureha in, uh, involved as well. Um, or cure, helps cure Nami, right? Or whatever he does. Does... Uh, doctor stuff doctors them right uh korea involved as well korea is the primary doctor right so assist korea but there are scenes where chopper is clearly the one tending to nami like that's the main conflict of the arc curing nami right um curing nami um and then defeats uh, Kiro Marimo. Or Chess Marimo, right? It really defeats two. Chess and, what, Kiro Marimo. He defeats them both. I think there's just more things for Chopper there. Kureha cures Nami, not Chopper. Yeah, but Chopper does tend to her. There's, like, panels of him coming in and tending to her. And being like, hey, do this, do that. Treating is the word, yeah. <laughs> I think, I just think it's Chopper a bit more. Nami steals the keys, that is big, but uh, I don't think she's also unconscious the rest of the arc, so I think that there's maybe not enough there for her aside from that. I'm going to give it to Chopper. <clears throat> Chopper fixes Sanji's back, yeah. Okay, um, Jaya. Jaya's Nami, right? Gets them to Skypea. Jaya's all Nami. Um, that's like the biggest thing. Whoops. Hello? Jaya's Nami. Um, okay. Now, next one. Skypea is a tricky one. Skypea is a difficult one. Skypea is a difficult one. I feel like Skypea is Nami as well. Tala, let's focus on direct impact, not domino effects, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree, not domino effects. Because, like, if you do a thing where it's, like, um, Vivi gets them to the... Like, Vivi gets them on the island, therefore, that allows all of the other characters to do their contributions. Therefore, Vivi's is the most important. I would say just, yeah, I, I don't think you can do, like, one character doing... You can't do a full chain of chain reaction of events, in my opinion. Um... Yusuf says sympathy MVP for Sanji and Alabasta is, is hilarious. I don't think it's a sympathy MVP. I think that's that's direct. Skypea is also Nami, right? Um, well, no, Skypea is tricky. Skypea is tricky. Let's see. Skypea is very tricky because we get a lot of contributions. So Zoro defeats, uh, defeats Ohm, defeats Brahm, <laughs> defeats Sky Shark, which actually did matter, <laughs> uh, for protecting the crew, um. We're not going to include losing to Enel. Um, it defeats Ohm, defeats Brom, defeats Sky Shark, helps cut down Beanstalk. These are all big things. These are all big things. Tell me if I forgot anything for Zoro. Nami's is also big. Solves mystery of Skypea and where the city uh, of gold is. So that's really big too because that's kind of the entire point. Um gets uh defeats kotori uh hotori slash kotori with grand fall kotori with gun fall um and then gets luffy to top of beanstalk to defeat nl um I'm a little... So, Skypea is a Nami arc. 
Um, but again, just because an arc is your arc doesn't mean, or like a you sent like this character centric arc doesn't mean that they're automatically MVP, right? That's not the same thing, right? Like I don't think Sanji was MVP of Whole Cake Island. Uh, Usopp wasn't MVP of Syrup Village. Um, yeah. So and Nami obviously wasn't MVP of like Arlong Park. Okay, Usopp. I think Usopp's limited enough that we don't need to mention him. Um, Sanji is big in Skypea. Helps defeat Satori. Sabotages uh, NL's ship and simultaneously saves Usopp slash Nami. Ah, it's tricky. Yeah, he doesn't get a solo fight, which... Still, yeah. That's big. This is going to be a tough one. Chopper doesn't actually protect the ship. He immediately blows the whistle for Gonfall. So, I'm not giving him points for that. Defeats Gedatsu. It's actually a, a comedy moment wherein Chopper's thinking about how useless he is. And then <laughs> the priest shows up and he immediately blows the whistle. Okay, Maya says, Nami uh, drove Luffy in the waiver up the beanstalk. Yep, yep, yep. Got that. It's big. Talos says, Sanji defeated Satori, saved Nami Nusap, sabotaged Arc Maxim. Yep, got all that. Um, Robin defeats Yama. I don't think she does much beyond that. She learns things, but not super important things for the crew necessarily. Yeah, so this is a tight one. I think you got a case between... You got a case between a few characters because it's a bit of a spectrum right um Zoro actually gets two fights this arc and cutting down the beanstalk is fairly big solving the mystery of Skype and where the city of gold is big Hotori Kotri is really minor getting Luffy to the top of the beanstalk is a very important climactic moment but then it's like so is cutting down the beanstalk so I feel like those two cancel so with Nami versus Zoro, you're weighing, you're weighing the mystery of Skypea and where the city of gold is. Like we're, you're weighing this versus Zoro's battle wins. Um, Sanji helps defeat Satori. I view honestly looking at the Satori fight, I view it mostly as Luffy's achievement. Because if you look at the fight, Sanji doesn't he contributes the finishing blow, but Luffy's the one that really. Most of the panel time is Luffy versus Satori. And then Luffy's the one that actually catches Satori, which is what they're struggling with. But Sanji still gets credit, right? Um, I still view this as kind of minor. No, it, it's important. It's just not like a, a Sanji win in that sense. But then this one is really big. The NL ship and simultaneously saving Usopp and Nami. And I feel like this is one of Sanji's first sort of... Um, no, it's not. This is... Man, this was back... Like... Back then, you could go through so many arcs. It's like, so, so many arcs where Sanji would go off and do this badass thing, mystery thing on his own. It's just not a thing anymore, right? Like, every arc, you can count some stuff. It's it's just, not every arc, but every major arc, right? Uh, Alabasta, the whole Mr. Prince thing. Skypea, this, the NL sabotaging, sabotaging NL ship and all that. Water 7, he's the one that actually goes solo to uh, get on the sea train. Uh, and carry out that mission, and then after that, obviously the um, the opening the the gates of justice to fuck up the Buster call. I just I don't understand why Oda cut that part of what he like his character because that's a huge part of his character appeal. Reflexi, thanks for being a member for eleven months. Nami leading Luffy to Enel is a very major point. It is a really really major point, but it's like so is cutting down the bean like it it cancels out with the beanstalk, right? This is... I'll do a poll. I'll do a poll. Fennec Fox 3 says Sanji was invisible and saved Momo and Wano. I guess I just personally don't consider that to be as memorable of a moment. I think maybe partly it's just because it's just based on invisibility where these other moments were a lot more... Like him carrying out a mission that was based on like his... Like him being tactical or intelligent or employing a plan... Or strategy or something like that. I don't know. 
Um, I, I guess I, yeah, the Momo moment, it doesn't stand out to me as much personally. I don't know. All right, I'm going to do a poll for this one. This is going to be tight. Don't just vote for your favorite character. Like, if you're a Zoro fan, if you're a Sanji fan, look, they've both got, like, plenty of MVPs, right? They've, they've won MVP. They've been winning MVPs, right? Don't worry, and they're going to win more too, all right? All right, just vote objectively, right? Zoro's main contributions are combat-related. He has the most important combat stuff. He defeats the strongest priest, and he defeats one of the Shandians, right? He gets some good combat moments. Um, and he's pivotal at the end in cutting down the beanstalk, right? It was him and Wiper that took down the beanstalk, which allowed Luffy to get there. Nami solving the mystery of Skypea, right? That's the big thing, right? That's that's what they're for. Figuring out where the City of Gold is, this is a big deal, right? She gets a minor combat moment, defeating Hotri and Kotri, so small contribution there. And at the big uh, climax, she gets Luffy to the top of the beanstalk, which is, you know, the, the, the finale moment, right? The thing that caps it all off, makes it so Luffy can defeat Enel. Sanji uh, gets a bit of con combat contribution, not a solo fight, but helps defeat e Satori, one of the priests. And then the big moment is obviously sabotaging Enel's ship and in the same process, saving Usopp and Nami. So that's a big two birds, one stone, right? Saving two crew members in a pivotal moment and uh, uh, delaying the villain's main plan for a bit. Uh, which is especially, I'll give a little bit extra emphasis on this, just because um, he's the only character to kind of get a one-up on Enel that's not Luffy in the arc. Because Enel is basically, no one can do anything to him throughout the entire arc. Obviously, Sanji can't do anything to him either. But he's the only character that kind of, like, fucks with him a little bit. Because uh, beyond that, Enel is unfuckable with, unless you're made of rubber. Um, so that's something to consider. But in terms of... Objective contributions, the Beanstalk moments are also really, really, like, they're factually huge to saving the island, say, concluding the, the story, etc. Religion debates island, says Nami, because she helped Luffy to fight Enel. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I got that that too. Um, they've all got a really good case. I genuinely think that... I'll tell you guys my pick after this poll. Because um, I don't want to skew it. Because I, I think my pick might even be biased. Um, and I'll be right back, right back. <clears throat> <clears throat> all right oh it's okay nami runs away with it all right all right yeah i'm on board i'm on board <clears throat> i thought that there'd be a bit more it, it part of the reason i'm surprised is just because um zoro and sanji obviously have huge fan bases and uh you never know like how much people are gonna rally for for their guy to get it um whereas nami i think has uh, relatively speaking, a much smaller fan base, right? So I got to do this method. Now we add Nami. Davy backfight. So 
This one is pretty straightforward. Um, it's got... This one's actually really fucking contentious. Because... This is a really contentious one. I think this this has a possibility to be the most contentious one of all. Because it actually comes down to one simple question. Which is... Who is more valuable in the Groggy Monster fight? Zoro or Sanji? No! The correct answer for this is Chopper. The cor I forgot what happens. At, at, I forgot we're including post Davy back fight. Correct answer for this is Chopper. Right? I was going to say, if we're doing Davy back fight itself, then it's, uh, it can't be Usopp, Nami, or Robin because they lost their, they, you know, they, they lost their Davy back fight, right? So objectively, they're, they're, they put up a donut, right? Luffy's out of the question. So it's just Zoro and Sanji. It's like who contributed more during the Groggy Monster fight. But, but, uh, I forgot that we have the Aokiji situation after that. And it's a situation where they got absolutely fucked up. And Chopper basically, like, this is the most, this is probably off the top of my head. This is the most intensive, like, urgent care moment, like, need to need to cure the entire fucking crew at once practically that i can think of in the entire story for for chopper <clears throat> usopp gave luffy the afro that's true <laughs> that's true usopp would be mvp for that <laughs> that is the only way that luffy would have won because like luffy ended up struggling so much against foxy at the end surprisingly Right? Like, I, who was expecting going into that fight for that to be one of the fights where Luffy comes out all bloody and bruised and looking like he just went 10 rounds with Crocodile or whatever? It just, it was so absurd. Imagine how he, like, if, if that's how he did with the Afro, imagine how badly he would have went without the Afro. Luffy could have lost. Y'all don't remember the chopper situation? It was wild. Like, like, this is a... Like, he had to save fully frozen <laughs> Luffy and fully frozen Robin. And, uh, tells... And, like, while that's going on, Zoro and Sanji are running up with, like, their arms and legs frozen. They're like, the fuck do we do? He's like, jump in the fucking ocean. Uh, I feel like I don't have to pull up panels for this. I feel like it's fairly clearly, uh, chopper. <clears throat> Yeah, I feel like that's those are the arcs where Chopper is gonna be most valuable. Where <laughs> it's like everyone just gets fucked up and you don't win. So in that case, Doctor is gonna be number one. Kenny says I refuse to acknowledge Chopper as a straw hat. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> it's a good thing that we avoided the Zoro Sanji debate because it's like. If you get into who contributed more in the Groggy, Groggy Monsters fight, that's just... I think that that could get ugly quick. Water 7 Sanji. Uh, so, I here's the thing. I consider Water 7 and Any Slobby to be the same storyline. I'm separating it out for this just because... I it It's more fun. Um, but it's not even I consider. They, they literally are the same storyline. It is one arc that happens to be connected by... Uh, that happens to stretch, like, that happens to involve travel. That's all it is, um, which is not the same as splitting up two story arcs, right? Um, I think it's only in One Piece where people have the mentality that, like, well, if it's not literally on the same exact island, then it's a separate arc. But it's like, that, that makes no fucking sense because that's not what a story arc is outside of the context of this specific manga. Um, so, to me, it's just like, yeah, Water 7, Any Slobby. Um... It's one arc, but for the fun of splitting it up, we can split it up. So in Water 7 itself, are we saying Water 7 ends with the sea train um, before they get to any slobby? If so, hmm. Oh, it says it's connected by CP9. No, it's connected by every, like CP9, sure. That's the conflict that they're dealing with, but everything, like it's the Usopp, Robin, Mary, Frankie storyline. Like, it's one continuous story arc covering the character arcs of all of these characters 
and the same exact conflict for the crew, which is that they are falling apart, their ship is falling apart, their crew members are leaving or being stolen, etc. All of this needs to be resolved, and the enemies are the gov government agency, CP9. By defeating them, we're able to resolve all of the conflicts of and character arcs that are going on, right? It, it's just, it's the definition of a singular story arc. To me, it's like, it, it'd be like if someone read, like, the prologue arc of Vinland Saga and was like, well, we gotta break it up by, like, every town Thorfinn went to. It's like, no, that makes no fucking sense. Or if you read Golden Age and we're like, well, we gotta fucking break it up by, like, every <laughs> every city and kingdom that, like, they, they fucking travel to over the course of this. It makes no sense. It's purely a one-piece coded me mentality where we're just used to arcs generally taking place on a singular island, but... By the definition of what story arcs actually are, by every other <laughs> story in existence, and just the the by the dictionary definition terms of what a story arc is, Water Seven Annie's Lobby is very clearly one singular storyline. It'll be like, I don't know, like it's like if you watch a movie and you see the characters travel from like city A to city B, and you're now you're like, oh my god, it's two fucking different movies. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's the same fucking movie. It's one story. Uh, but anyway. That's my little rant on that. We're separating it for the sake of a fun stream, but it's a, it's a dumb argument to say that they're two separate arcs because they're not. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> what was the conflict and resolution of Water 7? Oh, there was no resolution. Okay, where does it resolve in fucking any Lobby? Yeah, because it's one story arc. Anyway, rant over. Um, <clears throat> Water 7... Water 7 itself... Are we ending? So we'll end it at the sea train fights before they get to any lobby. So this is where it gets tricky, right? <clears throat> Nami doesn't really navigate here, right? So I don't think she's no, she's she's important for certain things. So gives advice to Luffy during Usopp slash Robin situation. Um. Helps break into Iceberg Mansion. Helps break into Iceberg Mansion. Then he's not really helpful for a while. Then cuts wave. That's big. Cuts wave. Defeats T-Bone. Cuts train. These are all good. So Zoro does quite some work. Nami's big contribution is towards the middle. Where she... Um, uh, finds out truth about Robin, um, leads rescue slash search party for Luffy slash Zoro, and finds, uh, finds them. She finds Luffy and is able to get Luffy to come back. Uh, organizes C train situation. Um, and I think that's where Nami's usefulness ends. So I don't think she's got a case here, necessarily. Yeah, I don't think she's got a case. There's no navigation that goes on. Usopp. Usopp. Tom Tom says, Usopp got the Giants, saved Robin, and, and Luffy, uh, got Luffy up. We will save that for any slobby. You're right, Usopp definitely has a case uh, for any slobby. Uh, Usopp, I don't think, has a case for Water 7. I don't think he's that helpful during this arc. Um, if anything, he kind of fucks things up a little bit, right? Sanji... Gets on train solo, rescues Usopp slash Frankie, defeats Jerry, Wanze, bunch of fodder, detaches train car with T-Bone. Um, retrieves Usopp at the end. That's the one thing that they kind of got away with. Uh... Yeah, that's the main contributions of Sanji. Chopper, I don't think, has it. Robin's a feud captive. Frankie, I don't think, has it. Yeah. This is tough. This is tough. So this is all just up to the C train. This is just up to the C train, right? We're not including any slobby. All right, so I think this is tough. <laughs> Usopp got mugged. That's true. Usopp also lost them the money. But then we got to add for Nami negotiated 300 mil berry which is actually a big deal <laughs> um because they did so don't forget 
they did get the money stolen, but it came back to them in the sense that Frankie used the two hundred million for the ship. So she essentially bought them the materials for this. She negotiated because she was gonna get they were gonna get sold a hundred million berry. She got them up to three hundred million berry. It's a big deal. <clears throat> you think it's Sanji? It's Sanji by far. All right, Sanji by far. I'm seeing a lot of Sanji. Whew, okay, any lobby. These are getting tough. These are getting tough the more straw hats we get and the more elaborate the arcs are getting. Any lobby. Any lobby. Any lobby, any lobby. Okay, hold on. So, for Zoro, is it just to feed? I feel like there's more to it, right? Um, Zoro kind of lead. I feel like if I say Zoro kind of leads the charge through any lobby, which is true and it's how it's framed, I think people will get mad. Um, like, defeats the judge guy. Does most of the, like, Zoro and Sanji, right? Does, they do most of the fighting work getting there to any lobby, ultimately. Does good portion of fighting work getting there. Um, defeats judge. Defeats Kaku. Um, I think that that's it for Zoro, right? I think that's it for Zoro there. So I don't think he's going to make it. I mean, we'll leave up his notes. Nami, let's see. Well, defeats Kaku, notable note. Kaku's key was the key. Gets Robin's key. That's something to note. <clears throat> Nami in any slobby. Is it just Khalifa? Defeats Khalifa. Um, recruits giants. That's huge. Recruits giants. Uh, who do a lot of the work getting them there. Recruits giants. Um, shoots flag. Saves Robin. Via sniping. Gives Luffy pep talk. That's a good case for Usopp. Very good case for Usopp. Very good case for Usopp. Religion debate silences Kaku is the MVP. He gave Zoro the key. <laughs> oh, Nami navigates the whirlpool. Fuck, I was advocating for that so hard previous stream. <laughs> uh, uh, navigates ship to, uh, through whirlpool to escape Buster call. That's huge. Forgot about that. Forgot about that. Forgot about that. Um, Sanji defeats Jabura. I saw Tala put a pretty good quote there. Um, defeats the second strongest. Inspires Usopp. I think we can give points for inspiring. Gives U <laughs> gives Usopp the pep talk to save Robin. Um, slash saves Usopp. Uh, okay. I'm, okay, hold on, hold on. Because now we're getting into the nitty gritty, right? Because then I should also give Usopp the points for stalling Jabura, right? Um, hold on. Yeah, should give Usopp the points for stalling Jabura. Stalls Jabura. Briefly. No, but it's so brief. No, actually, hold on. Fuck. Zoro should get major points, actually, for... Stalls Kaku and Jabura while handicapped um that's actually pretty big i'm not saying that's bumping zoro up to like one but that's actually <laughs> it's actually kind of crazy to think about that he spent half the arc tied with <laughs> with one arm tied to usopp fighting kaku and jabura at the same time um defeats jabura gives usopp the pep talk to save robin Slash, uh, 
slash saves us oh slaves us up from jabura yeah um saves us up from jabura then the any slobby gates thing obviously yeah gates of any slobby obviously uh escape opens gates so they can escape Yeah. Okay. Um, Chopper, I don't think has a case. Robin, I don't think has a case. Frankie saves Robin. Yeah, Frankie gets up there and saves Robin. But he's not involved in, like... He defeats one CP9, and he physically saves Robin. I don't think that's enough. Like, it's one of the weaker CP9. Defeats one of the... I'll put it down for him. CP9 physically saves Robin. Um, yeah, but, like, he's not even part of, like, the charge to get to the island, like, the Straw Hats do. He kind of gets taken there. Uh, oh, he closed the gates. My bad. Opens the gates, closes the gates. You guys understand what this means, right? Cosmic Cookie says, does Sanji get minus for Khalifa thing? No. I feel like minus should only be if you get people into a bad situation. I don't think Us Sanji got anyone into a bad situation. It's just like a net net zero, you know? Like, I was saying in Orange Town, I thought that was bad for Nami. Like, Nami got the entire crew in a trapped situation. Like, she, she got Luffy trapped, right? She, the like, what she did was basically why Zoro ended up having to save them. Right? Like, she, she fucked them over to begin with, which kind of makes it very difficult to make her MVP at the end. Um, but Sanji didn't fuck anyone over. It's just he didn't defeat Khalifa, right? Didn't defeat Khalifa. That's a that's a net zero. Frankie saves Chopper. True, true, true. Saves Chopper. Everyone contributes so much to this arc. I'm proud of everyone. This arc was like my favorite Straw Hats doing like Straw Hat team win, personally. Frankie burning Pluton! Holy shit. Burns Pluton. That's big. Okay, Frankie's making a case here. I do think you have to take into account the fact that, like... Because, again, we're being objective, right? So these are... Forget the names, just A, B, C, D, E. Frankie, like, character D or whatever, Frankie. Character D defeats a weak CP9. Character A, character B defeat, like, two of the top CP9 members that are several times stronger. Um, those things matter, right? Like, it's, like, the same difference between beating fodder versus beating a top officer, right? Um... Not that Fukuro is fodder, I'm just saying, like, you get that, relatively speaking, the caliber opponent you, you beat does matter, right? Kaku and Jabura, that's like a wash. Like, that's basically doing the same thing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is a tight one. This is a tight one. I think everyone has some big moments for the most part. Um, Clyde says if, Fra <laughs> if Frankie... Oh, build Sunny! Holy shit, we're getting there. Okay, we're making a case for Frankie. I'm biased towards building a case for Frankie, even though we shouldn't, because Clyde says if Frankie isn't MVP now, he literally never will be. And that is very, very true. Build, <laughs> build Sunny. All right. All right. Build Sunny. That is big. We're, we're making a case here. Um, anyone got anything else for Frankie? Anything else for Frankie? Nobody heard Mary besides Usopp. Usopp hears the Mary. Okay, fuck. It's not helping the Frankie case. Usopp hears the Mary and tells people to jump on. <sighs> Surya Prakash KS says Sanji also deflects one more guy with a heavy weapon. Please don't spam, but I noted your point. I uh, I don't know for including like I know what you're talking about, the ball and chain guys, right? Towards the beginning. Yeah, we're not gonna get into the nitty gritty of that. Like, let's just Let's add into here, Zoro and Sanji both do a lot of work. Do a lot of work leading charge at start. All right, and I'll just copy and paste this for both of them. Okay, so this is a tough case. 
Um, so looking at Zoro, it's all combat, right? Does work at the start. He fights Kaku and Jabura, uh, two v one for a long time to stall. Um, defeats. Oh, we 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 did this already for Zoro. Wait, hold on. I'm supposed to wipe this out. Oh, fuck, fuck. Okay, you know what? We'll we'll just do this for now. We'll just do this for now. We'll just do this for now. And then we'll control Z it all the way later, okay? Okay, so this is Zoro. Um, Kaku and Jabura um, helps lead charge to getting there, defeats the judge, defeats Kaku. Uh, and Kaku is slightly more important. Like, Kaku is more important than the other CP9 members, not just because he's the strongest, but also because it has Robin's key. So that's something to consider, consider there, right? Um, Nami defeats Khalifa, but then the big thing is, which is the weakest CP9 member available... But then the biggest thing is she navigates the ship through the whirlpool to escape Buster Call. Still don't think that's MVP conversation necessarily, because everybody... Like, in other arcs, there'd be a case, but this arc, everyone just did so much work. Usopp recruits the Giants, shoots the flag, saves Robin, the Luffy pep talk, and here's the Mary and tells people to jump on. Sanji does a lot of the work at the start as well. Uh, he defeats Jabura, gives Usopp the pep talk, uh, he also is saving Usopp in the process. But if we're giving Sanji saving Usopp, I'm going to take Sanji saving Usopp off of there. Because it's like, the strats, because then like, then I got to get into stuff like Nami saving. Because <sighs> then it's, then it's too complicated. Because everyone saves someone, right? Like, because Zoro's saving Usopp up here, right? He's basically <laughs> 2v1-ing while being dragged down by Usopp and protecting him. Uh, Nami then saves Sanji here. Um, Usopp saves Robin. I think saving Robin counts more than saving one of the other crewmates, right? Because Robin's the primary objective. Sanji obviously saves Usopp. Frankie saves Chopper. Everyone's saving something. I'm, I'm taking saving off the off the board because I think everybody trades off saving each other, right? Every Zoro saves Usopp. Sanji saves Usopp. Nami saves Sanji. Frankie saves Chopper. Everyone saved somebody, right? Chopper's not even in the conversation. Um, is that fair? You guys get what I'm saying? Like everybody, everybody saves somebody. Robin didn't save anyone. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> uh, but I, I agree. Like everyone saved for this arc. If you saved a not someone that is not named Robin, I'm not counting you. Basically, just because it all it all cancels out. Everyone did something. Um, Frankie is the reason we get say you want to live. Says Alex Santibla. Um, I don't think Frankie's the reason. I mean, like, there's so many reasons, right? Like, what the Straw Hats declare for Robin. Um, right, Usopp shooting the flag, Luffy declaring war on the world. Frankie helped, but it was really the, the Straw Hat crew showing the loyalty that they had to her. Carl Johnson says, bro, forgot about Robin pulling Luffy to the Mary after he couldn't move. I'm just not putting down notes for Robin because it, it would just be too much, right? It would get too long. Um, we know that Robin's not the MVP of the arc. She saves Luffy, but doesn't do much else besides that. Tuna Sub says, Morge, did you miss my super? Maybe. I don't remember reading your super. Let me check. Oh, Tuna Sub, I did. My bad. Um, if you get a second, you check out, you should check out the Kizaru drawing in Murphy's new video that someone made. It's like three minutes into the video. It looks really cool. Is it one? I saw something going around on Twitter. Is it one that's... Um, uh, that's uh, got sunglasses and like two like reflections in it is it that one because i think that one's a beautiful one i saw it on twitter um i think i also missed this from john six seven eight my bad man thank you for the five a loss slash blunder should be taken into consideration for mvp2 zoro getting absolutely dogged by nl should mean he isn't the mvp here um again so i'll take losses slash blunders into account if it's something that like fucks more people over not just if it's like like, Usopp losing caused that, like, Usopp, lo Usopp getting fucked up in Water 7 means that they lost the money, right? That's really, really bad for the crew, right? Um, but just losing a fight... I don't feel like just losing a fight should... Because, I mean, you forget then, like, if we're doing that, then in Skypea, um, Sanji also gets defeated by Anno. It just happens earlier, so people forget. But Sanji actually gets defeated by Anno off-screen... Like, everyone gets defeated by NL that arc, right? It, I don't think it takes you out of the MVP contention to... If you just run into a strong character and lose, you just don't get points added. 
if it's something where now you've fucked up more fucked over more people like again Usopp losing caused the money to get stolen then then I think that that's a minus we'll re we'll look at this again in the future at the moment I don't want to get too into it Usopp Sanji or Frankie okay I could I can look I I agree with that Usopp Sanji or Frankie I think it's just hard to look between the three. Sanji doing the gates is really big. Sanji doing the gates is really big. He does a lot of the combat, defeats Jabura, who's basically second slash third. Like, he's, he's right there uh, with Kaku. Um, he gives, Uf- gives Usopp the pep talk. Uh, again, if you're doing, like, if you're doing minuses, it's like Sanji losing to Khalifa, okay? Frankie loses to Luchi, Usopp loses to, loses to Jaibura, right? Like, I'm not, we're not doing the minuses game. Unless it fucks over somebody else, right? Um, but that's not the case, right? It just wasn't their fights, right? Like, Khalifa wasn't Sanji's fight, Nami takes her, uh, takes her, um, Jaibura wasn't Usopp's fight, um, Sanji takes him. Luchi wasn't Frankie's fight, Luffy takes him, right? Um, if it doesn't fuck over somebody, like, oh, I failed to protect this person, so now this person died, I, I don't view it as a minus. Yeah, let's do a poll. Demon says, Sanji doing gates, no one saw it coming. It's not about if you see it coming or not. It, this is not about, like, what you think is the coolest moment, all right? Just pure objective, you're a computer, you're a robot, you're measuring value to the Straw Hat's success over the course of this arc, all right? Ones and zeros. Think about think about it like that. Ones and zeros, okay? Usopp, Sanji, Frankie. This is what you got to work with. Also, keep in mind, just the tiniest bit of uh, of not ones and zeros talk, but rather um, uh, some little bit of bias that I will slip in, all right? If Usopp doesn't get it this arc, no, he will get it a future arc. I forgot. He's, there's Dressrosa around the corner. Usopp can get it at some point. Okay, so everyone's got a shot. If Frankie doesn't get it this arc... I don't know, man. <laughs> if Frankie doesn't get it this arc, I don't know when the fuck he's going to get it. All right, but don't let that sway your thinking. It's just a it's just a comment. Ones and zeros. You guys are ones and zeros. Just doing raw math, all right? Add up their accomplishments. Doesn't matter if you think one moment's really cool or one moment's really surprising or one moment's really uh, a big twist or something. Just... Just add it up, all right? Usopp, Sanji, Frankie. Yeah, no pity MVPs. If Frankie's never MVP, it's just the world we live in. <clears throat> I think I would give it to... F- Building the Sunny is the only thing that really I can kind of make, because that's big. But Sanji, Jabura... The gates. I don't value the speech to Usopp that much. I think I, I give the speeches like more soft value. Obviously, they're important, but I view them more as soft value. Um, Because if we're getting into that, like... I don't know. Um, if we're getting into speeches... Like, I, I, I value the speeches, obviously, but not like that much. Um, No, don't vote for Frankie just because it's his final... Like, it's the only arc he can get it. Don't vote for Frankie just because that. I ignored Zoro's speech. I think I wrote it... No, Zoro's speech was in Water 7. So I I put that as one of Zoro's points. I'm pretty sure, unless I'm forgetting. I think I wrote Gave Advice to Luffy. Um, I'm pretty sure I wrote that for Water 7. Um, I didn't write... Uh, Yeah, I, I, I don't think that there was a previous moment that I missed something like that. Don't give it to don't give it to Frankie just for that though. Don't give it to Frankie just for that. I think I swayed it too much. Cause I saw most people saying Sanji before it. How is it not Usopp? I don't know. I think these are all tight. I think this is close. Like again, if I if I it's it looks like Frankie won. I think I swayed it though at the end because I mentioned that he's probably not gonna get it otherwise. Like, it's, for a lot of people, it's like a Joel Embiid situation where it's like, oh, we got to give it to the poor guy. Um, Because, I mean, Usopp recruiting the Giants, shooting the flag, saving Robin, giving Luffy a pep talk, hearing the Mary. It is a lot of things that he racks up. Sanji gets a lot of combat stuff, but then also he gets the strat, like, he gets the... Sanji's just, like, all around. Like, Usopp, okay, so if you look at it this way, right? Usopp, everything he does is support, right? 
recruit giants, shoot flag, save Robin, Luffy pep talk, hear the Mary. Like it's it's the support moments. Sanji's like a lot of hard combat, but then also some support stuff with like the Usopp pep talk, and then also the strategy stuff with the gates. And then Frankie, it's like some combat. Frankie's more all around also. Some combat. Burning Pluton depends how much you value that. Physically saving Robin so it cancels out with Usopp's. Building the Sunny. Alex St Santa Blah says Frankie did so good they added him to the crew. But by that logic, like, literally every... <laughs> like, like, then Usopp should have been the MVP of Syrup Village. Or, like, you know, like, Nami should be, like... Um, I don't think you're automatically the MVP of every arc just because they add you after that. Like, I don't... Spoilers, I don't think Brooke's going to be the MVP of Thriller Bark. Also, it's funny you say that because they actually... No one... <laughs> they, they didn't actually ask... <laughs> out of all the Straw Hats, Frankie's the only one that they didn't actually, like, ask to join the <laughs> Frankie's previous gang... The Frankie family had to come in and beg them to let him join. And then the Strats were like, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll take the guy. <laughs> they weren't exactly like, like, falling over themselves to invite Frankie to the crew. He's the only one that needed, like, a, like a, a request from, from third-party members. So that's something to consider. Um... I don't know, man. Frankie paid for the, the new lumber for the ship. That's not true. He stole <laughs> the the lumber the lumber money from the ship. Credit goes to Nami because she nego negotiated 300 million berry, which Frankie then took from them and then bought the lumber. Frankie did not pay for this new lumber. He he, <laughs> he was gifted it. Um, pity crew member. Yeah, I don't know. He got that ESPN narrative push, yeah. <sighs> okay, like I, I, I'm happy to put Frankie because, uh, because that way Frankie gets on the board. But I can't help but feel like we cheated this one. You know, like, do people actually feel like it's Frankie? Like, let me know in chat. I'll put down Frankie if people actually feel it's Frankie. I feel like I, I skewed it too much towards the end, and I knew what I was doing. I was like, oh, this is like cheating or whatever. But I knew what I was doing. I just didn't realize it would have that much of an effect. Where's the poll? The poll ended. Frankie won. Talos says burning Pluton wasn't part of their goal this arc. Oh, shit. It wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Does everything have to... Okay, so the, the I should have written the rules somewhere. I don't feel like doing it now. It takes up too much space. Normally, I like to put a rule set before we get into it. Make it a tie? No, no ties. No ties. Okay. Sanju the Mary... No, we're not giving it to the fucking... We're not giving it to a boat. Alright. Sanji be real, Morge. I could give it to Sanji. I could give it to... We're gonna do one more poll. We're doing one more poll. Don't... This time, don't think about whose arc... Who may or may not get another opportunity. Don't think about that. For all we know, Frankie could get it today in Egghead. It like every day you get a new opportunity to compete for MVP, right? For all we know, Frankie could get it in Egghead. The arc is not over, right? Don't think about when will be the last or whatever time that some characters could get it. Do not think about that, okay? Don't think about any of that. Um, just objectively looking at what everybody did. I don't know what to say about the Pluton situation because the rules in my mind are basically like either goes towards the goals of the, the, the goals of the Straw Hats or resolving the conflict of the arc or the crew's survivability, right? Those are kind of the three things. I, I think I can put that down. Um, I'll put that down after this because once I do control Z, everything will go away. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it one more time. We'll do it one more time. If you still think it's Frankie, then go for Frankie. If you think if you've revise your opinion then it'll be somebody else go for go for it go for that too um don't think about who might or might not win again it doesn't matter hmm all right all right i'll give it five seconds i'll give it five seconds now, now we got a race. Four, 
three, two, one. All right, I'm I'm going to put Frankie. I'm going to put Frankie. I I still can't help but feel. I want everyone to get their time. I want everyone to get an arc. I still can't help but feel like we may have voted a bit more with our hearts than our than our minds there. But um, I think one of the reasons people don't, including myself, don't immediately think of Frankie for MVP of any Slobby is because uh, the Sunny, like the building of the Sunny, I don't think of that in any Slobby. Because it is technically post any Slobby. But I could have just made post any Slobby an arc. <laughs> and then Frankie gets that easy. And then you can debate Usopp and Sanji for the other. Oh my god. That's just me. That's me being stingy. That's me being stingy. It is... Alright, whatever. It is the way it is. Alright. Um, let me throw up the rules real quick. Rules... Um, either contribute to crew's goal or resolving conflict or crew's survivability. Okay. Fuck, man. Yeah. Because Frankie wins it easy for post any Slobby. Like, he's building the fucking ship, right? Frankie wins it easy for post any Slobby. But I don't want to get into the post stuff, because then we got to do post Marine Ford and stuff, too. All right, Thriller Bark is Zoro. Oops. Uh, Sabodi. <laughs> Who contributes to Sabodi? They all get kind of fucked up, don't they? Sabodi. Is it Sanji because of the flying fish riders? It might be Sanji because of the flying fish riders, right? Does anyone do anything else of note in Sabodi? I just think it's Sanji because of the flying fish riders. Talos says, make any Satai because you swayed it more. <laughs> I can't do that. It's too late. The, the votes have been dropped. Sabodi's Kuma. Kuma is not a straw head member. I think Sanji because of the Flying Fish Riders. Rika24 says, without Usopp, the crew would have lost to Perona. Plus, he made Salt Stars. The crew used against the zombies. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's true, but, like, you can also say that without Zoro, the crew would have just died to Ors, like, 50 times. Uh, Zoro is the one that led the charge against Ors, uh, and contributed the most over the course of that fight. Like, I, I would agree that Usopp has a good case with Perona, because that is a big deal, but, like, um, if you take into account Zoro versus Ryuma, Zoro, uh, Zoro being the biggest contributor and leader by far in the Ors fight, and then, obviously, the Kuma incident. I just think the Kuma incident's too big. Um, I think it's hard to argue against it. The Kuma incident does technically get complicated now that we know that Kuma probably wouldn't have captured Luffy regardless. But we don't actually know exactly what Kuma's intent was. Like, what was he going to do exactly? Um, would he have turned Luffy in? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. But, like, at the very least, for its time, what the situation was and the only way that was given as a route to get out of it... Um, it was only Zoro who could do it. Um, Sleeping Danger said Sanji did the most against Ors. What are you saying? Um, if you go back and read through the fight, Zoro is the one who leads the fight against Ors. Uh, he leads the fight against Ors, basically. If you want to get into, like, who does the most damage or whatever, to me, it's a zombie. I don't think any of them ultimately did that much damage to Ors. Um, but Zoro is very much framed throughout that, throughout that fight. Like, it's very clearly a character situation that's written for Zoro throughout that fight, that he's the one taking charge, he's the character that everybody else is asking questions to and looking to for guidance as to what to do, um, and what decisions to make. Um, the Ors fight is very clearly, like, a like, it's actually one of the most important, like, the moment of nothing happened at the end is not a moment that comes out of the blue. The Thriller Bark arc is very much about, like, positioning Zoro in that role as basically being the first mate of the crew. Uh, it just culminates with the nothing happened moment, but you see it throughout the Ors fight. Alright, I'm gonna give Sanji for, 
uh, for the, uh, what do you call? <clears throat> I'm going to give it to Sanji for flying fish riders. Right? Sanji for Flying Fish Riders. I think that's the only thing that, like, a crew member really, um, really got into there. Like, really got into help, like, helping everybody with, you know, Sabote Sanji. I can't think of anything else that anybody really did that that's, that's that pivotal in, uh, Sabote. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to Sanji. Uh, Impel down is Jinbei. Marine Ford is Jinbei. Okay. Return to Sabote. So it's got to be Sanji or Zoro, right? For defeating the pacif pacifista. Zoro, Sanji, right? I'd, I don't even know who you would call then, because, like, they did the same thing. Zoro, Sanji. Did anybody else do anything of note in in, uh, in Return to Sabote? Zoro made it first. I'm not giving co MVP. We need we need something. Give me something here. Oh, I'll give it to Nami. I'll give it to Nami. Cause their actual goal is getting the fuck out of there. Um, like she sails them into the ocean, right? That's that's Nami, right? Where does return to Sabote end? Is it, I view it as like the same as like getting him. Um, like kind of like. Jaya ends with Nami taking him to the sky. Return to Sabote would call Nami, right? What what's cutting the ship do? Cutting the ship is read the rules. Rules. Either contribute to crew's goal, no. Resolving conflict, no. Crew survivability, no. Dick so small I it's it's not about just hype moments. Dick so small I piss on my balls. Oda said Zoro isn't the first mate when discussing the number two spread. The first mate will be Usopp because his lies come true, plus he's Luffy's best friends best friend all right i don't want to get into a zoro first mate thing or not um it's just that's its own whole separate topic of discussion um let's focus on return to sabote let's focus on return to sabote i agree that zoro probably never officially be called luffy uh, zoro's first mate i guess in the anime manga probably frankie coded the ship i thought really coded the ship nami didn't navigate shit yeah really did the coding did Frankie do anything? Frankie helped set up the bubbles and found Kuma. Sanji was helping Zoro not be lost. That's true. Frankie prepared the ship. Oh, man. This, I don't even know what to say. Brooke gave Luffy top. <laughs> Frankie got a buzz cut. Uh, can I can I get rid of this arc? This isn't really an arc, right? Like, it's just... Frankie did repairs and upgrades. That's true. Frankie did do repairs. Like, he did some stuff with the ship, right? Let's give it to Frankie. Let's give it to Frankie. Because ultimately, that's more valuable than taking out a pacifista. Like, anyone can take out a pacifista, right? Ship upgrades and shit like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Zoro cutting the ship is not relevant. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It's not a it read the rules. Contribute to the crew's goal. No. Resolving conflict. No. Crew survivability. No. All right, we we give it we're giving it to 
Can I remove Sanji from any Slavi now? Or can I, can I remove Frankie from any Slavi is what I read? Uh, give Sanji any Slavi? <sighs> this is not how the MVP is supposed to work. All right, let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. <laughs> Talos says, what was the point of the, any Frankie pity? I specifically said, don't vote for Frankie for pity. I specifically said that. <laughs> but you guys did regardless. That, that can't be on me. That can't be on me. And also, I think that Usopp was kind of like... W wasn't Usopp second in the poll? Unless I'm crazy? I think Usopp was taking it over over uh, Frankie there. Or over Sanji there for second. Let me let me look again. Let me look again real quick at what... Uh, Return of Sabote is like three chapters, right? Like, let's take a quick skim together, right? The stream is going longer than I thought, but I'm having fun, so I can I can wait on dinner. All right, let's see. Brooke does nothing except play some music. Um, Sanji, who can ignore this stuff? This is just reunion shit. Reunion shit. Wait, wait, wait. Is there anything that's stated about, like, navigation? No? Nope. The Flying Fish Riders did a... Oh, shit. Yeah, this might be a Sanji, actually. I forgot about this. This might be a Sanji. Because the Flying Fish Riders... Yeah. This might be a Sanji. Okay, let's read it just a bit longer, just to check. Because if I forgot that, maybe I forgot something else. Robin's a no, Chopper's a no. Um, but yeah, a, this is why we check. Under Jogger Wall, thanks for the two. I wasn't around, but shouldn't VV be Alabasta? I don't know if she was MVP, dude. Um, I don't know if she was, if she was MVP. Um, I think she relied on the crew more than... I think VV would be second after Sanji, but if you take into account like Sanji beating the top officer, Sanji helping with the bomb, and then the Mr. Prince situation is pretty big. Um, cause like, if you think back to the Mr. Prince situation, the Mr. Prince situation was literally, it was Vivi running away by herself to find someone who could save her. And it was Sanji, right? I think you got to give it to Sanji. Um, okay. Let's see. What did Frankie do? Did Frankie do anything? Did Frankie do anything? I don't think Frankie did anything. Wait, I fixed her up. Okay, that matters. I fixed her up. Oh, and there's some other stuff. Usopp went to get fuel. Sanji stocking us, stocking us up on food. Okay, this stuff matters. Okay, so Frankie did do something, but we also found out that Sanji's fish riders contributed significantly. This stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna skip ahead. We kind of know what happens here, right? VV should get credit for Mr. Prince too. Yeah, but not as credit as much credit as Mr. Prince himself who actually did it. I don't think the person who says help me gets the same amount of credit as the person who does the saving, you know? Um Okay. Okay, is there anything else? Anything else? Okay, the coding begins. Frankie opens the valve. He does some stuff. Frankie does some stuff. He he does some stuff for sure. Okay. I would say Nami's doing some stuff here, but it's too vague to really quantify. All right, so here's the situation. It's either Sanji or Frankie. Um, defeats Pacifista. Uh, flying Fish Riders 
were responsible for protecting the ship for a long time. So that's big. Oh, and and <laughs> stocked up on food. Minor but short arc, so included. All right, so that's Sanji here, and then this is Frankie here, where it's um. Uh, did upgrades and uh fixed up ship released the uh coating airbag to coat ship all right and that's pretty much it we've only got a case between these two um <clears throat> john six seven eight thank you for the 10 you really think in your heart of hearts frankie was mvp in any sloppy do a repo without him sanji was second with 31 percent earlier watch it be us up now because of all the zoro dick riders um I don't think Sanji was the MVP, but that is because I didn't count, I normally don't count um, the building of the Sunny in any Lobby. To me, that's like after, I get like in, intuitively when you're thinking of the any Lobby event, right? I think of the building, like I just don't connect it to that, right? But if we're looking at the totality of the any Lobby arc and we're including what people traditionally call post any Lobby, although it is really just part of the any Lobby arc, there's no such thing as post, but it, like, if we're including post any lobby, right? Um, no, you could actually argue that post any lobby is its own arc. Actually, you could make that argument better than arguing that Water Seven is its own arc. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, that's the thing. Like, if we're including building the Sunny, then yeah, Frankie does have an argument uh, for sure. I think it for me, it's too close to call. If you ignore the Sunny, then no, I would give it to Sanji or Usopp. I I would give it to Sanji or Usopp. I don't know who I'd be inclined, like, I don't know. I might give it to Sanji over Usopp, I think. But if I include the Sunny, like, I really don't know. Between Sanji and Usopp, that arc, I really don't know. Because um, Usopp does more things, but Sanji's two big things, which are defeating Jabura and um, opening the gates, are really big. But again, Frankie... If we remove Burning Pluton, that's kind of significant. Um, Frankie also saves Robin, which is really big. So, like, that cancels out with Usopp saving Robin. It's the same thing. Frankie defeats a weaker CP9 member, so that's not as big of a deal. Um, and uh, then, yeah, if you're including building the Sunny, that's, like, pretty damn big, right? So, yeah, if you include building the Sunny, yes, I do think that Frankie has an argument for that whole section of the story, going from... Any Slobby to leaving Water 7 again. Yeah, if you include, I do think that. Um, I know Dragon Ball, thanks for the two. The Civil War literally doesn't stop without Vivi, though. Uh, yeah, but it also, but it, that's the same for everybody, right? Like, um, I mean, yeah, Vivi spoke to Koza, so that is really big. Vivi spoke to Koza, which helps, um, clear things up for sure. Um, I don't know, man, it's too late. We already voted for that one. It's just... No, we didn't include Vivi in that. But Vivi also... Like, Vivi, the bigger thing is, like, Vivi doesn't have a battle contribution. Like, all the other Straw Hats defeat a, a Baroque Works member. And then on top of that, they also all help her with the bomb situation. And then on top of that... Uh, like, so she helps with the bomb, and then she communicates to Koza. That's her biggest contributions, for sure. Um, but then beyond that, it's like... Nothing really for Vivi. She doesn't do the Baroque Works agent thing, so she the Straw Hats do the biggest things, which is like taking out the biggest obstacles, which is Baroque Works. Um, so Sanjay's Baroque Works bomb plus Mr. Prince. Mr. Prince is honestly really huge because that's like their entire the entire middle section of the conflict. It's pretty much exclusively solved by Sanji, which is pretty damn big, right? Obviously, the finale is a more important deal, but like that's everybody's work together. It's rare that you can say, like, an entire middle section of the conflict of the story is solved by, like, one character, right? Um, it's kind of like, you know, Zoro taking out all of those, uh, the bounty hunters that were going to kill them at Whiskey Peak, right? Like, you can't really argue anyone for Whiskey Peak after that because, like, a good section of the problem was resolved by one character. Again, like, Mr. Prince and Sanji proportionally because Alabasta is such a big arc. It's not the same as Zoro bounty hunters at Whiskey Peak. But you get what I'm saying? Like, it's just, like, the middle section of the arc it's just it's him like it's his it's his moment right um uh i i don't think you can argue well you can argue vivi above that obviously but i don't know um anyway we're back to this 
Uh, we're not going to go back to any Slobby. We're leaving any Slobby alone. You guys did your vote here. If you want to rectify the the wrongs of any Slobby, do it here, um, where we're going to vote for Sanji versus um, Frankie. So I'm going to remove this, pretend this doesn't exist. Um, I'm going to get rid of this if needed. Return to Sabodi, and we got Sanji, and we got Frankie. All right. All right. All right. It looks like Sanji will take it here. Unless people want to... It's getting a little close. We'll give it five seconds. Eyes96 says, guys, make sure you become MVPs of every arc of your life by using code MORGE50 on your first box of Factor. I 100% agree. You guys should try Factor, by the way. I was going to try Factor's Keto, but I still haven't pulled the trigger on it. Because I'm like, once I commit to Keto, I have to do that for weekends too. Because I was looking up, otherwise it doesn't work. Like, you have to stick to a Keto. Oh, fuck. It's tight as fuck. All right. We're going to give it 10 seconds. Once you commit to a keto diet, you have to eat keto all the time. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Um, but Factor does have keto now. Or like they had keto, I just didn't consider it. But they have keto if you want to try and do that. And keto is complicated to stick to. So Factor will just do it for you. They will just send you the, the meals that you need to stick to a keto diet. Puff says, which Patreon tier list lets me see you oiled up no cap? That's uh, That'll probably be in like the 1K to 2K category <laughs> per, uh, per month we ever get there <laughs> all right so it looks like three two one seems like sanji's gonna take it over frankie here um so that gives me the fun job of you know what i'm not even gonna figure it out i'll just do this i'll just do this thing i don't care all right this feels like a revenge <laughs> mvp vote no but the flying fish riders is big the flying fish riders is big can i just put this on top of this yeah that works okay um, Fishman Island. Ah, shit. Okay, these are the long arcs, right? Fishman Island. Am I crazy or is this Zoro? Nami has to... Okay, hold on. Oh, fuck. You know what? I gotta do this stuff. Hold on. Okay. Now we're doing this. Yeah, so Nami gets them there, which is big. Um, helps defeat Kraken, defeats Zo uh, Horty, defeats Heels. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> he single-handedly takes over the palace, right? Is Jinbei bigger than Zoro here? Okay, Jinbei... Is Jinbei bigger than Zoro? Someone remind me. Can someone rem Give me the rundown of what Jinbei does. Someone give me the run rundown. Okay, G Jinbei gave them the blood. That's big. Donates blood. Wait, I... The problem is that it's dirty fishman blood, so I just don't know if that should be considered like a positive. I I don't know about that. We'll keep it up, but just keep that in mind. All right. Um. So <laughs> beyond that, what does Jinbei do? Tells us a good backstory. Comes up with the plan, yeah. Comes up with plan, helps defeat Wadatsumi.
Oh shit, Chopper actually kind of had to work overtime. <laughs> saves Sanji's life. Saves Luffy's life. Chopper kind of had to work overtime this arc. <laughs> I think Cho Chopper's Loki got an argument here. Convinces Neptune to help Luffy? Does he? He freed Arlong fire. Freeing Arlong. It doesn't count against him this arc. Giving Luffy blood is, like, it's good. It's not that big. Because then, like, by that logic, Chopper has an equal, like, Chopper also... Like, they both save Luffy's life, and also Chopper does that, like, this sort of thing frequently. Um, I should have put more into Alabasta for, for Chopper, actually, because he did have to do a lot of doctoring that arc. Uh, like, Usopp, Zoro, I assume Luffy. Chopper could have had an argument in Alabasta. Ah, shit. Because Chopper also talked to the animals and got them across... Like, all of the animals that they made friends with, and they were able to... Like, you guys don't remember this, but... Hold on, we gotta go back to... Pause real quick. Pause. We gotta go back to Alabasta. I'm sorry, we just do. Because people... Everyone forgets. Even I forgot. What is it? 182. No, 181. 181? 180? Chopper's pretty big in Alabasta. Because he does a lot of doctoring. Right? So he's pretty high on doctoring in this arc. Um, and then also, like, the entire, like, all of this stuff. Like, the the camel, the crab, all of the friends that they've made are uh, exclusively through Chopper. Pretty much all of their travel through Alabasta is essentially taken care of by Chopper. Um, they made friends with this camel eyelashes because of Chopper. They allied with this crab that gets them across the water, thanks to Chopper. Um, yeah, it's it's largely Chopper. I, I'm serious. Like, it's making me think. Umir Ulas is the stream about to be four hours, Zelimeo. We gotta be, we gotta be objective here. We gotta be objective here. I think Chopper's got an argument for Alabasta over Sanji. Because the, the aid was too consistent. It was just too consistent. All like they abused those animals throughout that arc. They they use the animals a lot. Chopper helps defeat one of the um uh the Baroque works. Um and you guys forget the Mr. Prince storyline that I praised so much. Who was the person that was actually pretending to be Mr. Prince that made the plan work? Chopper. Uh and then obviously healing Everybody at the end, Usopp, Zoro, Luffy. Yeah, Mr. Prince saved them. Who was Mr. Prince, huh? Sanji was technically Mr. Prince, but as far as Crocodile knows, Chopper was Mr. Prince. That's who he was chasing through the streets. We're, we're doing Alabasta again. Ho Hei says every arc Chopper saves everybody. That's not true. There's plenty of arcs where there's not a lot of damage or not anything that that's that significant. Um, but Alabasta was an extreme one. Because, like, arcs where there's a big deal made out of it, like, I can pull up the panels right now of post-Alabasta battle, where it's uh, Zoro, like, and Chopper's uh, discussion of, like, oh, you shouldn't be training and stuff, and, like, I just healed you and all that stuff. Like, remember, Usopp's walking around in a full-body cast. Who gave him that cast, huh? Why is he walking around in that cast? Chopper heals him on the spot, right? Or, like, at least bandages him up. Or whatever the fuck. Right? Like, we got... Let's see if I can find it. Look, like... Chopper... Like, we focus in on Chopper curing everybody. Like, he's curing the entire... Like, these are all Chopper's patients at this moment, right? Um... Zoro bandaged up. But I swear they have an encounter where, like, Zoro gets back in. And Chopper's... Oh, yeah. You went out training again, didn't you? No, I'm the doctor. Don't take your bandages off. Chopper cured the entire crew. There's an argument for Chopper over Sanji for Alabasta. Um, we're going to do it again. 
Because I realize I'm not being fair. Tala says, Alabasta has other doctors. It wasn't only Chopper. Yeah, these other dumbass doctors that don't know what the fuck's going on. Like, like literally look at them. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Uh, what is it? Chapter 200. What were we just on? Yeah, he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He doesn't know anything. Where did you learn such medicinal skills? These guys are scrubs. Uh, he's like literally fanboying. He doesn't know what the fuck to do. Incredible. You think that this doctor was the person that fucking cured the striats? No, <laughs> it's our doctor, Chopper. Um, I'm the doctor here. It, this is clearly all Chopper's work. So yeah, we got it. We've got to run the poll again. If it's still Sanji, it's still Sanji. But um, there's an argument. So reminders, Sanji. Um, obviously defeated Baroque Works member, Mr. Two. Obviously, um, yeah, defeated Mr. Two, which is big, second strongest Baroque Works member. Uh, obviously helped disarm the bomb, but so did Chopper, so that's a wash. We're gonna count that, we cancel that. So, uh, uh, it's tight. It's honestly very tight. Because if we just write really quickly here, Sanji, disarm, uh, no, no, not doing disarm bomb because it cancels out. Defeated Mr. Two. Um, Mr. Prince saved everyone, right? If we do Chopper, Chopper defeated Mr. Four. Um, so not as big of a deal. Obviously, it's a tag team, but like, uh, like they took out two technically because there's two v two. So you get what I'm saying. Defeated Mr. Four, right? Um, defeated Mr. Four. Um, uh, helped execute Mr. Prince plan. So still most of the credit, Sanji. Um, but that's the thing, Chopper's involved, which is, like, you can't do the plan without Chopper. Um, but again, mostly Sanji's credit there. Um, got them all travel. Oh, unlocked fast travel, basically. Unlocked fast travel for them across Alabasta via Camel plus Crab. Um, treated everyone at the end from life slash death. The only reason I'm on this is because you guys are like hyping the fuck up about Jinbei donating blood, which is like, yeah, that matters. But by that logic, then like we have to give like if you're saying just because of this, Jinbei is the MVP of the arc, then it's like, OK, well, then Chopper's also immediately tied with Jinbei as MVP for the arc because Jinbei can't fucking donate the blood without Chopper actually carrying out the <laughs> the, the procedure. I think you would agree that the doctor that's actually carrying out the procedure to transfer the blood is just as valuable as the person doing the, uh, the blood transfer. Um, and then by that logic, I'm like, okay, if we're going by that logic, then every single arc that Chopper saves everybody's lives, we got to give him a lot more credit. All right. So these are the things that we're looking at, right? This is sort of setting the precedent for how much we value it. Camel was Karu's friend. Let's look at the crab. So Chopper shows up with the crab. Over here, blah, 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 blah. Um, Crab is one of the camel's friends. This is all Chopper translating. Uh, basically, he calls the shots of the animals. So we got to give him the credit there. All right, Sanji still takes it for Alabasta. He gets to keep it for Alabasta. He gets to keep it for Alabasta. Um, this, this sets us the pre precedent for how much we're valuing um, uh, the healing stuff, though. Hello? Okay. So I'm not giving that many points for donating the fishman blood. <clears throat> Yvonne says, Mr. Prince Sanji saves everyone. He gets the W. Again, Chopper was <laughs> part of the Mr. Prince plan. If, it, if Chopper was not part of the Mr. Prince, Prince plan, I wouldn't give credit there. because uh, But because I'm looking at it just numbers-wise, right? Um, defeated Baroque Works, defeated Baroque Works, right? 
Sanji's Baroque Works member was more important, so get more points there. But then Chopper's also got doing everything with the animals and doing everything with the uh, curing at the end, right? So there's a lot of points that are stacking up for Chopper. Then Sanji has Mr. Prince, which is a lot, but Chopper's also involved in Mr. Prince. So to me, it gets very tight. Um, again, because like Sanji's got two things that are kind of the same as Chopper's, defeating Baroque Works and Mr. Prince. Chopper's got defeating Baroque Works, um, participating in or helping with Mr. Prince, right? But Sanji's two accomplishments there are bigger, right? Because he defeated a stronger Baroque Works member and he was the mastermind of the Mr. Prince plan, where Chopper defeated a weaker Baroque Works member and was um, the accomplice to the Mr. Prince plan, but still participated, right? But then Chopper has two more big bonus things, which is unlocking fast travel in Alabasta, which is huge with the animals, and then curing everybody at the end, right? To me, you can make an argument for either. You guys voted. You said Sanji over Chopper. Um, I don't know if that's actually correct, but I think it's fine. I think it's fine. But, uh, I mean, you can see, like, the logic behind what I'm saying, right? Like, you've got two very similar accomplishments on both sides. Sanji's are just better in both regards, direct. But then Chopper has many more additional accomplishments that depend on how much you weigh it. Fast travel is very important because they don't get to stop the the, the uh, civil war in time if Chopper hasn't made friends with the animals, right? Curing everybody at the end is important because it's fucking curing everybody at the end. Everyone's uh, talking about Jinbei donating blood. Like, it's the same fucking thing. It happened at the end of Alabasta. Uh, Chopper's doing it again at Fishman Island. <clears throat> yeah, I know Chopper wasn't really Mr. Prince, but I'm saying he was part of that plan, right? All right. Let's keep going. Wait a second. Are we... Ugh, fuck. We're still stuck on Fishman Island. I thought we've solved this for some reason. I disagree that Jinbei's the... MVP just from donating blood. I already explained why. Because if you want to go by saving lives, Chopper takes it twice. Um, yeah. Chopper takes it because he saves two, like, he saves two of the Straw Hats. Jinbei just saves Luffy. Um, he does come up with a plan, help defeat Wadatsumi. Zoro does a lot, though. Helps defeat Kraken. So it takes over the palace, he defeats Horty, defeats Hyozo, who's the second strongest there. Okay, it basically, com basically comes down to, like, how much are we valuing the life-saving? Charles D. Ray says it's not the same, the blood means more because Fisher Tiger. Read the rules. Contribute to the crew's goal, resolving conflict, or crew survivability. You know what? You just got me there. Because resolving conflict is huge. Huge, 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 huge there. Because it resolves the, the, uh, I was thinking more so of the, like, actual physical conflict going on. But Jinbei resolves the, um, that's huge for obviously resolving the actual, you know, uh, the societal conflict that's going on in Fishman Island. So that's huge there. Wait, I forgot I gotta do it in this order. So Jinbei does take it. That's my bad. Hello? Control Z, please. All right. All right. Yeah, that's clean for Jinbei. Societal conflict matters too. All right. Punk Hazard. This shit's so messy. Is this one Sanji? Is this a Sanji one? I feel like Sanji does a lot here. Because he takes in the Marines, saves Tashigi. Right? Like, uh, uh, gets Marines... Uh, to follow him, stops Virgo, but I feel like that's all he does, right? Zoro just beats Monet, kills Dragon, kills Dragon, beats Monet. It might be Chop. I don't remember what Chopper actually did, Doctor Wise, though. Oh, Sanji saves Kinemon. Saves Kinemon. Get slash gets his body. That's big. Um Yeah. Sanji's looking good here. 
Nami, she's her heart's in the right place, but I don't think she does that much, right? Unless I'm oh no, she cap helps capture Caesar, right? Usopp captures Caesar. <laughs> That's a big one. Capture Caesar. Um, helps capture Caesar. Gives kids a mom figure, which matters. Um. I want to give her points for navigating. I guess it doesn't matter that much here. Um, does Chopper cure anyone? I don't even remember. Saves from poison. Sanji fed everyone. That's true. The feeding mattered. Like, uh, f this is an arc where food matters. Fed everyone at the end. Okay, I think Zoro's out of contention. Nami, I it's kind of vague. Usopp's not in contention. If someone can remind me what Chopper did, I maybe there's a argument for Chopper. Saving Tashigi from Virgo is all the uh, same thing. Save the kids. Does he save the kids? I, I remember Law saving the kids. Nami creates the cloudway into the island. Also, let's get the stream likes up to 300. Holy shit, this is like the latest I've ever done a stream by far. I don't think... Ch so Chopper got the kids sober. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be enough for him to really take it here. This might be another Sanji one. This might be another Sanji one. Yeah, it might be another Sanji one. Unless someone's got a good argument for something else, this will probably just go to Sanji. Yeah, I'm just going to give it to Sanji. Then Dressrosa is Usopp. Zo is Chopper. Whole cake is whole cake's tight. It's either Nami or Jinbei. Um, navigates them there. Helps Luffy defeat Cracker. Um, uh, takes over King Bomb slash Homies in Sid. Deucing woods to get them out. Um, it's not Brook. Not only is it not Brook, it's not even close to Brook. But we can go through him. I'll throw him in. Um, <clears throat> helps get Road Pony Glyph from Big Mom. Um. Homies get them out of seducing woods, plus stalls big mom. Um, 
Stalls Big Mom with lightning. Then I'm not going to include the moment on the boat where everybody contributed, like Jinbei contributed, Nami contributed, Brooke contributed to getting Big Mom out because it's just going to cancel out. So I'm only doing unique things. Um, Jay Mun, thanks for being a Yonko tier member for one month. Hey, Morge, just saw Godzilla minus one last week. Thanks to your recommendation. And it was absolutely amazing. Haven't felt that much genuine emotion. Um, and then the rest is cut off. But yeah, like to me, it was a very, very emotionally moving movie by the end of it. It was a really, really just powerful movie. Like a really good feel good movie in something that felt like a very serious and heavy, uh, yeah, serious and heavy subject matter. Um, like they took it surprisingly seriously for a Godzilla movie. The tone was very, yeah, the tone was just very down for most of it. But by the end, it felt like a very uplifting movie with like a lot of characters that I really, really enjoyed. Um, like not even a lot of characters. It was a tight little cast, but, uh, I think the main character's journey was one of my favorite, like movie character journeys, um, of like an action hero that I've ever seen. Saul's Big Mom with Lightning navigates them out of, um, Yonko Empire while chased by fleet, right? I think that's it for Nami. Then Jinbei also has a pretty big case because Jinbei's is basically like, he comes in a little bit late, but he stops Big Mom's first rampage. I think this might be a Jinbei one, honestly, the more I think about it. My, it's Okay, okay. Stops Big Mom's first big rampage. That's number one. So he stops her uh, rampage by feeding her, right? Then um, frees Luffy slash Nami, helps retrieve, uh, helps get Road Ponica from Big Mom. Helps get Road Ponica from Big Mom. Then, um, uh, what is it after that? Uh, helps save Luffy from, oh, saves Luffy from Katakuri. This is during the, uh, wait, wait, wait. Does he arrange the Capone Beige meeting? Arranges Capone Beige meeting. Saves Luffy from Katakuri. This is during the tea party. Like, he throws some water to stop Katakuri from just taking out Luffy. Then, what? They hit the seducing woods. Okay, saves them from Tidal Wave. Tidal Wave navigates. Oh, no. Steers them out of Yonko Empire. <clears throat> All right, we can do Brooke for fun, which is uh, helps get Road Poneglyph from Big Mom, breaks Mother Caramel Photo. I think that's everything that he does. Sleeping Dangerous is Brooke breaking the picture is a net negative. I don't really want to count it, but I know people will get very upset if I don't count it because it is a net negative. It's what fucks their entire plan over. But it is technically... It's not... Like, it doesn't really... I don't know. Kenny says, Jinbei give Big Mom one of his Fisherman Island potoglyphs, net negative. No, because it doesn't hurt the... Con it, read the rules. <laughs> read the rules. None of that goes against the rules. Um, like it doesn't hurt anything here, right? Yeah, I guess it's a net negative for Fishman Island or no for, uh, it's not a Fishman Island poneglyph. It's just one that he found under the sea. It's not like a net negative to anything that happens to them in the arc, right? Whereas breaking the mother caramel photo did actually fuck them over in the arc, but they didn't know that. Like we can keep it, but it's not like a big deal. Bad magic says Brooke did 99% of the poneglyph. How? What are you, how is, what? <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> what are you talking about? This isn't like a case where like Brooke, okay, if it was something like Brooke stole the Poneglyph, got away or something like that, and then like he fell down a ditch, and then like Nami and Jin Jinbei had to pull him out of the ditch, that's like, then you can say Brooke did 99% of it, but no, he didn't. Pedro distracts everyone, Brooke goes in, does the only thing he's supposed to do, which is get the Poneglyph rubbing, and then does he steal it successfully from Big Mom? No, he is physically captured and held by Big Mom. She literally physically still has the, the Poneglyph. She has Brooke in her arms. Then Nami has to come in. Like, so Brooke has not retrieved anything. He has not gotten away from Big Mom whatsoever, right? So, like, it, it, is, it is 
ridiculous to say that he's done 99% of it because the Poneglyph is still in her fucking possession. She is holding on to him physically. He is a captive, right? He is in this situation. Like, it's he's as captive as Frankie was when he had Pluton inside of him and he was held by CP9. They literally had the blueprints to Pluton while they had Frankie, right? Same thing with Brooke. So he's captive, held by Big Mom. Then he needs to be rescued. Nami comes in. She almost rescues him successfully, but then Brooke actually... Okay, hold on. We got to pull up the chapter. Blackleg, thanks for being a member for 16 months. Sup, dog, he says. Let's pull up the chapter. Um, I feel like it's going to be something like 850. Because 845 is the enraged army. Um, where's the situation happening? This is this shit. It's a cool moment, but again, like, it's a very, very cool moment. This is, like, a really cool moment. But again, it's not about how hype it is. It's objective contributions. Objective contributions, right? Objective contributions, right? So you cannot give Brooke credit for stealing the Road Poneglyph because he does not. He does not get the Road Poneglyph away from the Big Mom Pirates. He does not get it back to the crew. It is still firmly in possession of the Big Mom Pirates. In fact, extremely firmly in possession of the Big Mom Pirates. This isn't, this is not downplayed. This is factually what it is, which is he did not steal the Road Poneglyph. She still has the Road Poneglyph. There's no debate there whatsoever. There's no downplay. This is like definitions of words. Where's the Road Poneglyph? Here. Who is captured? Here. Brooke. It is, <laughs> there's, there's nothing to argue here. Brooke did not steal the Road Poneglyph, right? He is <laughs> a captive of Big Mom who currently physically has him and the road poneglyph in her hands literally there is nothing to debate here there's no downplay there's there's nothing to say here right his moment before was very hype yes but up till this point he has not achieved anything right he has not gotten them back the road poneglyph right he has gotten some progress in that like she doesn't know that he has a rubbing right so he's gotten a rubbing but he has not taken it away from big mom he has not stolen it back to the crew. He's not retrieved it. Nothing. He's currently a damsel in distress, right? So he needs to be saved. We have multiple escape attempts. She's uh, swatting the, uh, the escape attempts, right? Nobody's able to successfully do it. Chopper gets kind of close. Nope. Carrot, nope. Pedro, nope. Okay. And then finally, Nami, who is a master thief, right? She's able to get Brooke. So Brooke gets Nami. And then... What are our rules? This is technically minus MVP points because this is the type of thing that we talk about that's screwing over other characters. Nami has actually already stolen Brook back. He freaks out and that nearly screws them over. It works out in the end, but like Brook's case is already tentative compared to the other two characters. And like he nearly fucks up the retrieval of the road poneglyph. Like you have to be objective here. Looking at our arguments for all of the previous characters, what we agreed was a net negative or not, this is a net negative moment, right? Nearly fucks it over, nearly gets Nami fucked over, Jinbei has to come in, save them. So this is a Jinbei, Nami, Brook trio success, granted, but at the end of the day, even if we give Brook majority credit, it's like 50, 25, 25, right? So he helps get the Road Poneglyph, let's say major... Biggest contribution, biggest contribution to getting Road Poneglyph from Big Mom. Is it a solo act? Can you honestly say that Brooke did 99% of it when the chapter begins with Brooke here, like captive held by Big Mom, and the entire chapter is about saving Brooke and the Road Poneglyph from Big Mom? You cannot say it's 99%. It's like a 50%, 25-25, something like that. You could make a lot of arguments, but it's like a three-way right beyond that look at everything else loot like defeating cracker the entire way that they get out of the seducing woods is because nami took over king bomb and the homies the only reason they got out of the seducing woods again like their entire escape is because nami took over the seducing wood homies and king bomb right she stalled big bomb with lightning on their way out of the seducing woods she navigates them out of the yonko empire right and she helped get the road poneglyph jinbei stopped big mom's first rampage um, freed Luffy and Nami, which is huge. Again, helped get the road poneglyph. 
a Rangers Capone beige meeting, saves Luffy from Katakuri, saves them from the tidal wave, steers them out of the Yonko Empire. I think it's between Jinbei and Nami. You cannot actually... Like, okay, someone make an argument for Brooke. Someone make an argument for Brooke that's not just, like, we like Brooke. Someone make a legit argument. Like, make an argument. Make an argument for Brooke, which is getting the road poneglyph. Like, even if, even if you wanted to argue, even if you wanted to argue that getting the road poneglyph is exclusively Brooke's contribution, even if we pretend that he did 100% that, it's still so clearly outweighed by everything else that these characters did. Like, unless you're saying that, like, getting a road poneglyph immediately negates all other contributions by characters in an arc, which I don't think anyone would agree with. Like, I don't even know who the fuck, like, who got the road poneglyph in Wano? I don't even remember. <laughs> like, this, like, even if we said 100% it's Brooke who got the road poneglyph, you think that that means that that's more than everything else that they did here, saving the crew's lives over and over, their entire escape, getting in, getting out, saving Luffy and Nami's life, Saving their life, like, steering the ship over the tidal wave, getting them out from, like, the entire Yonko Empire coming after them, it's really not close. And that's only if we pretend that Brooke exclusively got the road poneglyph, which he didn't, right? If you start giving them credit for that too, which they deserve because they got it, then there's not really an argument for Brooke. Houdini's channel says he out-survived a Yonko. <sighs> All right. I'm going to have an aneurysm. Read the rules. That is not what MVP is about. All right? That is not what MVP is about. Did they contribute to the crew's goal? Resolve the conflict or the crew's survivability? Hype moments? Yes, it is cool that Brooke stood up to Big Mom. It is cool that he did that. Reminder that every other straw has done that at this point, right? Um, in the story, it's just a thing that characters do. But yeah, it's cool that Brooke was the first to do that. That is not what MVP is. We're, we're adding points for production. Points are about production. Standing up to Big Mom is not production. It's not producing anything more to the crew. It didn't matter if he like got to say that badass line or if he was knocked out immediately and then held captive by her, right? Either way, he's knocked out, held captive, right? Same thing. Oh, am I blocking the rules? Okay, that's my mistake. That's my mistake. <laughs> Let me move myself around so you guys can see the rules real quick. These are the rules. Contribute to the crew's goal, resolve the conflict, of the arc or go towards the crew survivability those are the rules that were typed out okay you don't get points for hype we've not given points for hype for any of the pre previous characters we don't make exceptions just because it's brooke and brooke otherwise doesn't really have any moments right it's not about hype does it make any difference if brooke was immediately taken out by big mom and taken captive or if he got to stand up say that line and then was taken captive it doesn't matter that's not mvp consideration production is all that matters all right well, we're not going to put Brooke in a poll because you need to put, <laughs> you need to put arguments for Brooke. Put an argument, everyone put an argument for Brooke. Put an argument for Brooke. I want to see an actual argument, not just like Brooke is MVP. Because it's kind of ridiculous that you can stack up all the shit that Nami did, all the shit that Jinbei did. And then the only thing for Brooke is like getting the road poneglyph, which is not even his own, like his sole contribution that he did himself. It's a shared contribution. But even if you want to pretend it's just him, it doesn't outweigh everything that they did. It would just be absurd. It would be like saying, like, you know what? I just like that Chopper got them into the mirror world and they were able to use the mirror world. And therefore, Chopper is the MVP of the arc. You can't, you need an argument. You need logic. You need logic. Quality over quantity. Why is getting a road poneglyph more important than saving all of their lives 50 times over? Why is it more important than them getting, being able to escape the seducing woods the first time, escape the seducing woods the second time? survive against the entire Yonko fleet chasing after them, survive the tidal wave and Big Mom killing them. Why is getting the road poneglyph more important than any of those things? You think getting a road poneglyph is as important as saving the lives of crew members or saving the life of Sanji? Because that's insane. Now we're getting the headcanon. Holy shit, the head... Okay, Miss Cat... Miss Catonic says he got under Big Mom's skin, leading to her making mistakes later in the arc. If this is the arguments that we have for Brooke, no, he is not making to the poll. I need some legitimate arguments that are not headcanon for why Brooke should be anywhere remotely considered for MVP compared to Nami or Jinbei. Because those are the only two char characters that have arguments at the moment. Sanji's not included. 
Sanji did too little this arc, and he also got them. Like, most of the arc is, like, his problem. Coast Coast says, Brooke speed blitz Big Mom. I didn't put any of their attacks against Big Mom on the ship because they're all equal contributions, right? Brooke speed blitz Big Mom. Jinbei punched her off the ship. Nami uh, shocked her, right? It's all, uh, it all adds up to the same thing. So, like, I just need an argument. Cookie Mario says, I have a very good argument, so hear me out. So, in Whole Cake Island, Brooke is Brooke, and I like Brooke. With argument, am I right, chat? Damn, I guess we lost this argument at this point. We should kick out Brooke. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Because, like, I see Brooke for Whole Cake Island MVP so often, I'm just so baffled by it because the dude did next to nothing next to certain other characters, right? Kazoo Ch Kachu says, The road Poneglyph is literally the way to get to the One Piece. It's the goal of the series, not just of the Strahds, but any character who wants to become Pirate King, you're really underselling him. So, again, Brooke did not get it by himself. That's true. But two, would you say then that like whoever got the road Poneglyph in Wano is automatically the MVP of Wano regardless of anything anybody else did over the course of the arc? Are you saying that that character is immediately the MVP of Wano? Because at that point, you're basically saying road Poneglyph immediately trumps all other contributions to anything, period. Because you're stacking up like defeating the Yonko commanders, uh, allowing the Strats to be able to escape enter Yonko Empire, get away from the Yonko itself, evade their entire fleet, uh, saving each other's lives. Like, you're negating a shit ton of stuff that was necessary for them to actually, you know, survive the entire conflict. Same with Jinbei. Like, <laughs> freeing Luffy and Nami, uh, helping get the road Poneglyph, obviously, getting the meeting, saving Luffy from Katakuri, saving them from the tidal wave, steering them out from, like, <laughs> an entire Yonko Empire coming after them. This is all, like... Like, you think just getting a road Poneglyph trumps everything? No, because the Wano Poneglyph was a pushover. Different situations. Big Mom was stopping anyone else from getting the Poneglyph. They got the Poneglyph after beating Kaido and Wano. So then my question to you is, why are you giving Brooke exclusive credit for getting the road Poneglyph? If we want to, if we want to entertain that argument. Because, like, if we're going by the, like, again, have we not set a standard that if you screw over other characters in the pursuit of goals, then you get docked points for the MVP argument? I think we've set that standard before in the past. Based on that, like, yeah, Brooke helped the first step of getting the road Poneglyph. He did not get it back to the crew. He required two other members to do it. And he nearly screwed over the second one, who was already successfully rescuing him. But <laughs> he woke up and yelled, which basically fucked that entire operation over. I, there's just no, you, you can't, unless you have like extreme, extreme bias, there's no logical argument to saying that Brooke has anywhere near as much value as Nami or Jinbei over the course of the arc. Lucky says if Brooke didn't get it, who else could have? Nami. Nami's literally made a career out of being a, ma a master thief. Nami also successfully snuck into Big Mom's room when nobody else could and retrieved Brooke from there, right? That just wasn't her job because she was doing... In fact, more important things related to the main conflict of the arc, i.e. getting Sanji back, in helping Luffy defeat Cracker, getting them out of Seducing Woods, getting them to Sanji, right? But very obviously, Nami would do a better job than Brooke at stealing things because she's literally the, she's the thief of the crew. That's what she's always been best at and is better at than anybody else in the crew by a good shot. We need to do a... Uh... Kenny says, just say you hate Brooke. I just hate the fact that, like... Brooke gets so little over the course of the series, and it's so skewed that to a point that, like, if Oda gives him one or two cool moments in the arc, people freak out, and they're like, holy shit, MVP. I'm just like, no, I, I kind of hold the character to a higher standard in my mind where I'm like, why can't this character just get, like, actual stuff to do over the course of the arc, you know? Like, he's never had an argument in any previous arc. Oda kind of throws him a bone in Whole Cake and gives him two moments, which fans freak out over, and, like, blow out of proportion i'm just like why can't he actually just have a role arc to arc you know like oda gave him those two moments on whole cake island that people have like circle joked over for years and it's like he went throughout all of wano doing nothing again egghead he's gonna do nothing again and it's just like 
why can't we just have like reasonable expectations and like like even freaking Frankie's been the MVP of some arcs. Robin, it's a sad story, but you know, like why can't this dude just be written like a real straw hat? You know, like Nami does all of this shit and people don't really talk about it as much because it's kind of just expected, right? But if you're just being objective, like character A did all this, character B did this, character C did this, you'd like take the names out of it. You'd be like, obviously A or C is number one. Um, I don't think anyone would really be pulling for character B if it's just like, well, they almost got the road poneglyphs and then they broke the photo, which didn't do anything versus character A did all this shit, character C did all this shit, you know? So for me, it's just like, it annoys me to hell when people like hype the fuck up over what Brooke did in Whole Cake Island because I'm just like why can't this just be the no like why can't he just get moments more regularly you know like it's to a point where like he gets one thing and then like people gas that up to like being way more significant than what it is and kind of just take for granted that other strats are just normally doing a lot more all right all right we're gonna we're gonna do this magic man says Nami follows log post very easy no, in the new world, it's almost impossible. That was established earlier. And also, like, pretty much no one can follow the log post properly except for, like, really skilled navigators. Have you not read, like, the beginning of One Piece where they make a huge deal, like, as they're setting into the Grand Line, how difficult it is to navigate the Grand Line? All right. We're almost at the end. We're at Wano. Oh, Jinbei brings the Sun Pirates. Fuck, 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 fuck. Remember this. Sun Pirates. Keep this in mind when you're voting. Keep this in mind when you're voting. That's huge. This is really big. I was pro, pro Nami, but I think the Sun Pirates kind of... I'm going to do the poll again. I'm doing the poll again. Get ready to vote again. Get ready to vote again, but the, the Sun Pirates is really big. Hold on. Yusuf says Batfish lost W pool. All right, now we got a tight race. I'm going to give it 10 seconds for everyone to get their votes in. Think about it. Think about it. Yusuf says more stay skewing polls. Low. I was pro Nami before this. If you remember, like I was saying Nami was the, the MVP of Whole Cake Island last stream. And that was kind of the discussion that even led to this one. Um, but look, I, I stack them up and I just vote based on what, what seems correct off of that. Right. There've been multiple times. If you guys remember through these polls that I'm like, okay, this seems correct. Then we line everything up. I'm like, okay, never mind. This other thing seems correct. Um, I'm just trying to line it up. Just trying to line it up. Let you guys make the final call for the most part. Unless you guys are going to do dumbass things like vote for Brooke for no reason. Joe passes because everyone actually wants Brooke. It doesn't matter what you want. You got to vote with your brain this time. Not like, uh, you know, uh, trying to think of a, a bones joke, but, you know, I can't. Not with your heart. It's got to be objective. I should not say what I prefer. It's excuse the polls. Yeah, that's true. All right, it looks like Jinbei's taking it. Jinbei's eking this one out. I'm going to end this poll one second. That was a tight one, though. All right. How are we going to do Wano? I don't even remember everything everyone did in Wano. All right, let's start with Zoro. I feel like Zoro's main stuff was uh, fought Hawkins, helped feed Okobore Town. Um... Then he was just running around most of Act 2. Um, Act 2, there was stuff that happened in the in the Flower Capital Act 2 that he was a part of. Was it Toko? Was it, was it, he jumped in to save Toko? Is it R Zora for Wano? I don't know if it's Zora for Wano. I've, I've got to count up. Um, yeah. Uh, big contributions in Kaido slash Big Mom Fight. Uh, defeats King. 
Alright. Nami. Was she the one that came up with the Kibidongo plan? Oh, killer. Killer. Sorry, sorry. Anyone else I'm forgetting? Nami was in the Kibi. I think I think it's Zoro, right? I think it's Zoro. I don't think it's Sanji. I don't think he contributes that much overall. Um, is there any arguments for Robin? Otherwise, I'm like it's Robin's last chance. Is there any arguments for Robin? Black Maria. She got a lot of intel. I'm just writing down just to see. Got a ton of intel in Act Two. Um, I think most of the intel is through her, if you remember. Um, it was after the Flower Capital scene with um, Komuro Saki and Orochi, and then she reveals like she got all this info about the Onigashima, like layout and all of that stuff. So she got a lot of intel in Act Two. Um, defeats Black Maria. Zoro saves Hiyori. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of shit. Yeah. No, it's Zoro. It's Zoro. Uh, saves Hiyori. Um, defeats Apu. Gets Antidote. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think it's just Zoro. Right? Robin found Poneglyph. Wait, that should put her at the top, right? Because of, uh, found a road poneglyph that basically is, invalidates all the other contributions right no i'm just kidding i do agree with the logic that um it's different to steal the road poneglyph versus like if they're going to beat all the bad guys anyway and get the road poneglyph i agree with that um but yeah all right saves yasue no yasue dies remember oh <laughs> he does save him off screen okay um yeah i think it's zoro there was just so much stuff that happened in Wano, I don't remember if there's an argument for anyone else, but Zor's the easy, logical answer. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm trying to think. Is there any <coughs> any arc that Robin would have had a close argument? I don't know if she was close any arc. Maybe Jaya, if not... Because she, she caught the South Bird. So Jaya, Skypea, no. Any Slobby, no. Thriller Bark, no. Sabodi, no. I don't think there's an argument for, for uh, Robin. Shonen Academia says Wano video win. In the next several months, guaranteed. In the next several months. Um. Yeah, I don't think there's an argument for Robin that I can think of. Alabasta? No, because she's a... So Robin... <laughs> She does save Luffy, but at the same time, she's a huge part in, like, it's one of the biggest, like, you know, we give anti-MVP points. She gets a ton of anti-MVP points for that arc for basically fucking over the Straw Hats and VV and their plans, like, many, 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 many times over. She does do the one thing of, like, saving Luffy, but aside from that, like, she was a fucking menace throughout Alabasta. Poor Pell, poor, poor VV, like, the entire reason VV got captured was, and uh, taken to Crocodile in the first place was because of Robin. Um, Fishman Island, maybe, because she did read, yeah, she did read the, the Poneglyph there. I don't think she does much else, though. She doesn't even defeat one of the Fishman officers. Okay. All right. So let's do it. Let's count it up. So Zoro is, Zoro's count, final count is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven MVPs. Sanji, I feel like Sanji took it at the end. It just felt like he was voted very often. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, it's a t <laughs> It's funny how things work out, huh? Funny how things work out. All right. Uh, let me just double check. Because Zora's one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven and Sanji's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, no one can be angry about that, right? Okay, Nami, one, two, three, three. Uh, 
Well, Sanji did cause the big issue at Baratie. That's true. That is very true. We're we're not going to go back through. John six seven eight says Zoro only tied because you didn't put post anys. Uh, but I also didn't. Um, I like to be fair. I think people were also kind of doing the makeup thing with Return to Sabodi. You know what I mean? Like, cause I think it was Frankie versus Sanji. I do think that people kind of voted like a little bit based on um, just re like fixing the any slobby situation you know um i also think it's very possible usopp could have taken it for any slobby i think those two things were very close you don't know how how all the people who voted frankie would have voted if they would have voted for usopp or sanji and usopp and sanji were like neck and neck i think sanji i forget i i thought that usopp was ahead but i also was just looking at who's in front um you're telling me sanji was ahead either way we don't know how the frankie people would have voted um I will say that, like, Zoro, a lot of the arcs that he's getting, if you're a Sanji fan, a lot of the arcs that Zoro got MVP for were kind of freebies because it's the beginning of the fucking story where there's, like, two or three straw hats running around pretty much. And um, the other two are, like, not combat-oriented. So if that, like, if you want to say Sanji's MVPs matter more, there's definitely, you could, I think that's definitely true. Um, Zoro's getting like, like, I don't really value Jinbei's MVPs over here because he's the only fucking person there. <laughs> he's the only person at Impel Down and, and Marine Ford. Um, who we got next? Usopp for Little Garden. And then Usopp for Dressrosa. Chopper. One, two, three. Where did Chopper get the other one? One, two... Oh, yeah, the Davy back fight. Okay, Robin... Ah, oh, shit. Yeah. <sighs> Sad stuff. Let's get his in there, too. All right, Frankie, we gave one, right? Any slobby. All right. Then Jinbei ended up racking up a lot. One, two, three, four. Four. Then Vivi's also zero, I forgot. All right, there you have it. <laughs> Zoro should have won Fishman Island at least. Yeah, that's true. Like, if you want to argue that for Sanji, there's other arcs you can argue for Zoro. Um, I still think that Chopper is an argument for Alabasta, Loki. But, uh... Yeah. Um, the thing is that Zoro's contributions are generally very one note. It's just going to be battle contributions, basically. So it's like, how much do you value those battle contributions? Um, it has to be like an overwhelming number of battle contributions, like in Wano, for him to, to take it, right? Sanji's a very, very versatile. Sanji's just tailor made to win MVPs because he's so versatile, right? Because combat wise, he's going to be beating someone like the third strongest of the arc, right? He's going to be, like, very, very impactful combat-wise, usually. But then at the same time, he's good at so many other things, like stealth, strategic decisions, things like that, um, working on his own. So Sanji's, like... Like, Sanji is the best straw hat in general at going off and doing his own mission. So that's why he's kind of tailor-made for um, winning arc MVPs, I suppose, because he can just rack up a lot of different things. Um, but yeah, Zoro, again, his main contribution is generally combat. Um, so yeah, he needs like arcs where he does a shit ton of stuff combat wise or thriller barks kind of the exception almost where it's like, that's when it's more like, um, leadership type stuff that, uh, is significant enough that takes the cake. Usopp is rare because like Usopp will win in arcs where it's like little garden or dress Rosa, where it's almost tailor made for Usopp, where it's like, it's specifically built for him to have some huge moment of bravery that completely changes the, the conflict and the whole conflict is built on him having that moment of bravery and stepping up, right? Then Nami, you know, she's got a lot of skills. Uh, if we look at Nami stuff, it's like Reverse Mountain, Jaya, and um, 
Skypea, right? Stuff like Jaya, Reverse Mountain, these are things that are very navigation based, right? Like getting up Sky, like getting up Knock Up Stream, getting up Reverse Mountain. These are just clear. She just takes it. And then Skypea, again, it's stuff that's like geography based, solving the mystery of Skypea, traveling up the beanstalk to get Luffy where he needs to go. Um, so this stuff all makes sense. And then Chopper kind of, Drum Kingdom's a gimme. Um, and then the other two are Davy Backfight and Zoe, because those are arcs that require a lot of healing. Frankie snuck one in, still controversial, the most controversial win of them all, Annie's Lobby, um, mostly because we counted post Annie's Lobby in there, but that was Frankie's win, and then Jinbei, I don't know how I feel, like, Impel down on Marine Ford, it's just because he's the only one there, so kind of like Zoro's first MVP, so, like, I don't really value these, um, Fishman Island, it was his arc, again, yeah, Fishman Island was big, because, like, he helped solve relationships between fishman and human to some degree so that's a big one right that's his arc whole Cake island yeah i was leaning jinbei by the end still feel like it could have been a nami win but like the sun pirates coming in that i think that tipped the scales for me nerve and v maker thanks for the 10 for sanji fans his mvps are more later in the series with lots of competition for zoro fans his later mvp wins are clearest there was no real debate for thriller bark and wano yeah that's true i think the ones that zoro wins are just pretty <laughs> straightforward right Logetown was the only one that was tight, and that's because almost nothing happened in Logetown. But everything else is just like, yeah, Zoro, 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 Zoro. Yeah, like, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. John678 says, for her panel time, Nami not looking good. Okay, so I'll say this, which is like, it's not about, you don't have to be the best every arc, right? Like, you don't need to win um, MVP every arc. Like, I think there's many arcs where Nami is one of the main contributors, and she's in, you know, like, she's a big deal pretty consistently through the story i think it's just rare that one i think it's very rare to win mvp when you're not good at combat because you can only do so like you have to do so much other stuff that's important that uh you it just needs to outweigh you know the lack of combat ability so again for nami it's just like jaya like literally sailing up to the sky reverse mountain sailing to the grand line getting over the mountain um uh what's the other one yeah, Skypea again, um, she didn't do anything combat-wise, but she had so much contribution with everything else. And she got a little bit of a combat win in there, too, with Hotri Kotri. But, you know, yeah. Uh, it's just difficult. <clears throat> Alright, guys. Sleeping Dangerous Sanji has the most MVPs and runner-ups. Yeah, that's true. Everyone, like, I think that that's undisputed, that Sanji had the most... He was MVP almost... Yeah, I think if you look at overall, if you're counting runner-ups too, like golds and silvers, I think Sanji runs away with it pretty clearly, right? Um, again, it's just the versatility, like, very significant in combat, um, but also has a lot of, like, the stealth skills, the strategy skills, etc. And he just does a lot of stuff on his own historically throughout the story. So it's uh, pretty, pretty good for him. Um, also one fun thing to see, so like, you can kind of track it, because if you think about it real quick, right, I think a lot of Sanji fans have not enjoyed Sanji's treatment post time skip, and you can literally understand why once you look at something like this, right, because, whoops, um, it's actually very evident when you look at this, because after, so, once Sanji joins the crew, he's in what you would call MVP contention every arc, right? Arlong Park, like, Baratier, Arlong Park. Um, some people were arguing him for Drum Kingdom, then San, then Alabasta, uh, like, Water 7. A lot of people thought he should have won for any Lobby as well. You know, um, Sabote. Like, he's just, he's racking up the MVPs during his time pre-time skip. And the drop-off is pretty significant because I don't think that there's any arc after the time skip that... Okay, Return to Sabote, but that's like a three-chapter arc, right? And it was a contentious win at that, because it was like, well, Zoro and Sanji both beat a pacifista, and no one else did anything. Sanji, we gave him the tiebreak because he, like, I think J like Frankie was also in there for repairing ships and stuff. But, like, you get what I mean. Like, it was an arc where nobody really did anything. We gave it to Sanji because of the Flying Fish Riders, not even really Sanji himself, right? So once the post-time skip really gets going, he's he's got the Punk Hazard arc, but the further we go in the new world, right, it's like, ooh, Dressrosa, no. Zoe, no. Hokeg Island, no. Wano, no. And it doesn't seem like Egghead 
Egghead it actually is doing well recently, right? But you can understand, like, all the major arcs post-time skip, Dressrosa, Hokage Island, Wano, Sanji has not been in MVP contention, whereas it was just kind of the norm pre-time skip. So, yeah, I, I would, I can see the kind of feeling that a lot of Sanji fans might have in that a lot of the things that people really like the character for, like doing the Gates thing at any lobby or fucking up NL's ship or like uh, the Mr. Prince stuff, you know? Um, going on a solo mission at Water 7, like, on the sea train, right? These are all things that are not as common nowadays. So, you know. John678 says, Zoro also only has one post-time skip. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, I'm not comparing the Zoro-Sanji thing. I'm saying, like, Sanji fans are used... Well, I don't think Zoro fans were ever used to... Like, Sanji fans were used to the idea of a character that is a jack-of-all-trades, right? That does a lot of different things like they're used to him doing things like stealth missions or solo missions by himself that like kind of come have him come through as the shining mvp of the arc right zoro that was never his thing right zoro has been doing the same thing post time skip that he always did pre time skip which is he fights the second strongest sometimes he fights some more characters besides that which racks up more significance for him in a given arc but he generally has always done the same thing with sanji you can kind of like see the drop off in terms of um you know, he's not doing the same sort of things that he was doing pre-time skip, where we're used to seeing him in certain roles that we were like, damn, Sanji really saved the day for everybody that arc. Like, or he really came in clutch with that that plan that got us out of this big pickle or whatever, every arc, you know? Um. Anyway. It's all because of Law. Hey, Law's a symptom of the changes in One Piece. All right, guys. <clears throat> Hope you guys had fun this stream. I certainly did. This is the longest I've ever streamed, I think, like done a solo stream. Um, Umer Ula, thanks for the two. Zoro's never going to take an, have an L like Sanji and Fishman. Yeah, Zoro, Oda just doesn't treat Zoro like that. They're fundamentally treated differently. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a fun stream for me. Uh, we had a lot to talk about. It was a fun to kind of look back just through the, the Straw Hats roles throughout various arcs. Yeah, um, I will talk to you guys later. Look out for tomorrow's video.